பேர் யார் என்று நான் அறிமுகப்படுத்துற வேண்டிய அவசியம் இல்லைன்னு நான் நினைக்கிறேன் பட் இருந்தாலும் இவங்க யார் என்று ஒரு சின்ன இன்ட்ரடக்ஷனோட இந்த இவெண்ட் நம்ம தொடங்கலாம் ரொம்ப முக்கியமான இன்னொரு விஷயம் என்னன்னா இந்த இவெண்ட் இங்கே நடக்கிறதுக்கு எல்லா ஏற்பாடுகளையும் செஞ்ச ஆதிசக்தி நிறுவனத்துக்கு நாங்கள் முதல்ல நன்றி தெரிவிச்சுக்கிறோம் அதே சமயம் கடல் ஃபெஸ்ட் நிகோல் அண்ட் ஜூடித் அவங்க ரெண்டு பேரோட இணைப்பில் நடக்கிற இந்த ப்ரோக்ராம் அவங்க ரெண்டு பேருக்கும் நன்றி வந்திருக்க ரெண்டு பேருக்கும் டி எம் கிருஷ்ணா சாருக்கும் பெருமன் புல்வெளியாக அவங்க ரெண்டு பேருக்கும் நன்றி முதல்ல பெருமாள் முருகன் ஐயா யாருன்றத ஒரு சின்ன இன்ட்ரடக்ஷன் ஐயா எழுத்தாளர் ஹீஸ் அ திங்கர் ஹீஸ் அ ரைட்டர் ஹீஸ் அ ஸ்காலர் அவரோட எழுத்துக்கள் எல்லாம் தமிழ் தமிழ் எழுத்தாளர் அதையும் தாண்டி ஆங்கிலத்தில் அவரோட எல்லா புத்தகங்களும் டிரான்ஸ்லேட் ஆகிருக்கு அதில் சில புத்தகங்கள் மாதவபாகன் பூனாட்சி போன்ற பல கதைகள் பல சிறுகதைகள் எழுதிய ஒரு எழுத்தாளர் அடுத்தது டி எம் கிருஷ்ணா அவர் ஒரு கர்நாடிக் சிங்கர் பாடகர் ரைட்டர் திங்கர் அவரும் பல புத்தகங்கள் எழுதியிருக்காங்க அதில் ரொம்ப முக்கியமான புத்தகத்தை பற்றி தான் இன்னைக்கு டிஸ்கஷன் நடக்க போகுது செபாஸ்டியன் அண்ட் சான்ஸ் என்ற புத்தகத்தை பற்றினா ஒரு உரையாடல் டி எம் கிருஷ்ணாவும் பெருமாநுடன் ரெண்டு பேரோட உரையாடலுக்கு தான் நம்ம இன்னைக்கு எல்லாரும் ஒன்று கூட்டிருப்போம் ஸோ திஸ் கான்வர்சேஷன் இஸ் கோயிங் டு பி வைல்யூபல் ஸோ இட் வி இன் தமிழ் அண்ட் இன் இங்கிலீஷ் ஸோ த கான்வர்சேஷன் வில் ஸ்டார்ட் அண்ட் அட் தி எண்ட் ஐ லோப் இந்த செஷன் ஃபார் கொஷின்ஸ் ஃபார் ஃபார் ஹாஃப் அன் ஹவர் ஆல்சோ ஸோ ஸோ லெட்ஸ் கோ லெட்ஸ் ஸ்டார்ட் அவர் கான்வர்சேஷன் Uh, of the evening. Welcome. So, Sebastian and Sons, we are going to talk about one of the things that we are going to talk about. What connection is there? One person is there, one person is there, one person is there. There is a writer and there is a singer. So, everybody will have that question. What conversation is there? Do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? கிருஷ்ணா வந்து அவர் பாடகர் மட்டும் இல்லை அவர் பெரிய எழுத்தாளர் அவர் ஆமாம் இப்போ நான்லாம் வந்து எழுத்தாளர் நானும் என்ன விடலாம் அதிக எழுதப்படுகின்ற நிறைய எழுதக்கூடியவர் உங்களுக்கு தெரியும் இங்கிலீஷில் நீங்கள் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா அவர் தொடர்ந்து பல பத்திரிகைகளில் பிரிண்டட் மேகசின்லேயாட்டும் அப்புறம் இது ஆன்லைன் மேகசினில் இது எல்லாமே காலம் எழுதிக்கிட்டு வராரு நிறைய கரண்ட் இஷ்யூஸ் பற்றி உடனடியாக வந்து ரியாக்ட் பண்ணக்கூடிய ஒரு பப்ளிக் இன்டலெக்சுவல் அப்படின்னு நம்ம அந்த வார்த்தை சொல்லலாம்னு நினைக்கிறேன் அது மாதிரி தொடர்ந்து நிறைய எழுதக்கூடியவர் நான் நிறைய சமயம் அவரை பொறாமையாக நான் சொல்லுவேன் நாங்களாம் எழுத்தாளர்னு பேர் வச்சிட்ருக்குறோம் உங்க அளவுக்கு எழுத முடியறதில்லை ஆனால் நீங்கள் நிறைய எழுதுறீங்க அப்படின்ட்டு இன்னைக்கு கூட பார்த்தீங்கன்னா வந்து ரூமில் உட்காந்து நான் லேப்டாப் எடுத்துகிட்டு வந்தேன் ரெண்டு நாள் சும்மா பைய திறக்காமல் வச்சுட்டு இருக்கேன் அவர் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா வந்த உடனே திறந்து ஒரு கட்டு அனுப்பணும் அப்படின்னு அதுக்கு ஒர்க் பண்ணுறாரு அதனால் அந்த மாதிரி அவர் அவருடைய அடையாளம் அப்படிங்கிறது அவர் கர்நாடிக் சிங்கர் அப்படிங்கிறது இருந்தாலும் அவர் பல தளங்களில் தொடர்ந்து செயல்படக்கூடியவர் அதில் ரொம்ப முக்கியமானது எழுத்து அது அவருடைய சிந்தனைகளை அவர் வந்து எழுத்து ரீதியாக தொடர்ந்து வெளிப்படுத்தி கொண்டிருக்கக்கூடியவர் அந்த அடிப்படையில் தான் இப்போ இன்றைக்கி நாங்கள் பேசுகிறது அப்படிங்கிறது இப்போ இந்த இன்றைக்கி பேசக்கூடிய புத்தகம் இது செபாஸ்டின் அண்ட் சன்ஸ் அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டு ஆங்கிலத்தில் வந்திருக்கு அதனுடைய தமிழ் மொழிபெயர்ப்பு செபாஸ்டியன் குடும்பக்கலை அப்படின்ட்டு தமிழில் இது காலச்சோடு பதிப்பகம் வெளியிட்ட புத்தகம் இங்கிலீஷ்லேருந்து ட்ரான்ஸ்லேட் பண்ணி இவ்வளவு ரொம்ப முக்கியமான புத்தகத்தை எழுதின ஒரு எழுத்தாளர் இந்த புத்தகம் ரொம்ப சாதாரணமாக எழுதுனது இல்லை இது ஒரு பெரிய கள ஆய்வு ஃபீல்டு ஒர்க்கில் போய் அவர் சில வருஷங்கள் இதுக்காக செலவு பண்ணி எழுதின ஒரு நூல் இது இது இங்கிலீஷில் வந்து அப்புறம் இந்திய மொழிகளில் தமிழில் இப்போ மலையாளத்தில் வரப்போகுது ஹிந்தி கன்னடம் இதுலாம் வரப்போகுது அந்தளவுக்கு ரொம்ப புகழ்பெற்ற ஒரு நூல் இது அதற்கு காரணம் என்ன அப்படின்னு சொன்னால் நாம் வழக்கமாக நினச்சிட்ருக்கிற 
நம்முடைய ஒரு பொது மனக்கருத்தை அதை வந்து மாற்றக்கூடிய புத்தகம் இது நம்ம ஒரு இசை கச்சேரி கேட்குறோம் அப்படின்னு சொன்னோம்னா அது நமக்கு கேட்கக்கூடிய ஒரு அனுபவமாக மட்டும்தான் இருந்தது அதில் யார் யார் வாசிக்கிறாங்க அதனுடைய பின்னணியில் என்னெல்லாம் இருக்குது என்ன கருவிகள்லாம் பயன்படுத்தப்படுது அப்படிங்கிறத பற்றி நம்ம பெருசாக அதை யோசிக்கிறது இல்லை நமக்கு இசை கேட்பது ஒரு அனுபவம் அப்படின்னு நாம் நினைக்கிறோம் ஆனால் அவர் அந்த துறையில் இருக்கக்கூடிய காரணத்தினால அதில் ஒரு ஒரு இசைக்கருவியை பற்றி அவர் நுணுக்கமாக பார்க்குறார் அப்போ ஒரு இசைக்கருவி ரொம்ப வேறுபட்ட ஒன்றா இருக்கு மிருதங்கம் ரொம்ப எல்லாத்துக்கும் தெரிஞ்ச இசைக்கருவி மிருதங்கம் இல்லாமல் இசை கச்சேரிகள் கிடையாது அவ்வளோ முக்கியமான ஒரு இசை க கருவி நம்ம தமிழ் சமூகத்தில் தமிழ் பண்பாட்டில் இந்திய பண்பாட்டிலேயே ரொம்ப முக்கியமான ஒரு அடையாளமாக இருக்கக்கூடிய ஒரு இசைக்கருவி அந்த இசைக்கருவி எப்படி உருவாக்கப்படுகிறது எப்படி வாசிக்கப்படுதுன்னு இல்லை அவருடைய கேள்வி எதுக்குள்ள நுழைஞ்சதுன்னா அந்த இசைக்கருவி எப்படி உருவாக்கப்படுகிறது என்பதில் போச்சு அப்போ அதிலிருந்து அவர் அதை அதை ஒட்டி உள்ள ஆய்வுக்குள்ளே போய் சில ஆண்டுகள் செலவு பண்ணி இந்த நூலை எழுதுகிறார் அதனால் இது வந்து ஒரு ஆய்வு நூல் அப்படின்னு நாம் சொல்லணும் அது அந்த அடிப்படையில் தான் இந்த நூலை பற்றி நாம் பேசணும் இப்போ அவர் இங்கே வந்து ஒரு பாட்டு பாடி ஒரு கச்சேரி செய்கிறது அப்படிங்கிறது அவர் தொடர்ந்து எல்லா இடத்துலையும் பண்ணிகிட்டு இருக்கிறது தான் இங்கேயும் அதையும் செய்கிறது இல்லை இங்கே நாம் இந்த நூலை பற்றி பேசணும் இது இவ்வளோ முக்கியமான ஒரு நூல் இது ஆக எல்லா மொழியிலையும் கவனிக்கப்பட்ட ஒரு நூல் தமிழ்லேயும் ரொம்ப முக்கியமாக கவனிக்கப்பட்ட ஒரு நூல் இது இது ஒரு இதுவரைக்கும் தெரியாத ஒரு விஷயத்தை வெளிச்சத்துக்கு கொண்டு வந்துருக்கு அந்த அடிப்படையில் தான் இது முக்கியமான நூல் இப்போ நான் வந்து கிருஷ்ணாட்ட நான் ரொம்ப இயல்பாக பேசுகிற மாதிரி தான் பேசுவேன் நீங்கள் பின்னாடி இதை ஒட்டி கேள்விகள் கேட்கலாம் இப்போ இந்த புத்தகம் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா இங்கிலீஷில் வரும்போது செபாஸ்டியன் அண்ட் சன்ஸ் அப்படின்னு தலைப்பு கொடுத்துருக்காங்க நீங்கள் பார்த்துருப்பீங்க நிறைய பேர் படிச்சுருக்க கூடும் தமிழில் வரும்போது இதுக்கு செபாஸ்டியன் குடும்ப கடை என்று தலைப்பு கொடுத்துருக்காங்க அதோட இதுக்கு ஒரு சப் டைட்டில் இருக்கு மறைக்கப்பட்ட மிருதங்க சிற்பிகள் அப்படின்ட்டு ஒரு சப் டைட்டில் இந்த புத்தகத்துக்கு இருக்கு அதில் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா இவர் சிற்பிகள்னு சொல்றாரு மிருதங்க சிற்பிகள்னு சொல்றாரு சிற்பிங்கிற வார்த்தை இதில் பயன்படுத்தப்பட்டிருக்கு அதே போல மறைக்கப்பட்ட அப்படின்னு சொல்றாரு இந்த ரெண்டும் இந்த ரெண்டும் தான் என்னை வந்து இது ஆங்கிலத்தில் வந்தபோது நான் ஆங்கில வாசிக்கிற ஆள் கிடையாது தமிழில் வந்தபோது இது செபாஸ்டின் குடும்பம்னு மறைக்கப்பட்டன்னு போடுறாரு இது என்ன மறைக்கப்பட்டங்கிறதுக்கு என்ன அர்த்தம் அப்படின்ட்டு இந்த நூலுக்குள்ளே எனக்கு போகிறதுக்கான ஒரு தூண்டுதலாக இருந்தது ஆனால் இந்த ஒரு துணை தலைப்பை இப்படி வைப்பதற்கான காரணம் என்ன அதுதான் நான் கிருஷ்ணாட்ட முதல்ல கேட்கக்கூடிய ஒரு கேள்வி வணக்கம் நான் பயலுக்குல வந்து சொல்கிறேன் ஆன்சர் இன் இங்கிலீஷ் அண்ட் தமிழ் எப்போ பி மெஸ்ஸி டா பட் ஓல் தி பெஸ்ட் யூ I think I'm not going to translate Gurugan, but I think my, to my response, you probably will understand this question. You said that you were talking about the first time you were talking about the first time. First, you were talking about Isai Karimikal. 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 This is an artistic experience. The experience of a performance. The performance is music. There are instruments played. the instrument is not by itself it is being played and there is music that emanates from it and there is an what you could call an artistic experience and you go back home uh idu vandu neenga vandu appadi illa kalavi nu appo na adhu modhu solla so even as musicians we have never wondered about what happens before the stage now if you ask me before the stage what happens i'll say practice i'll say years of training uh i'm not belittling any of this all this is important if you go and ask mridana player he will also say i practice 14 hours my guru taught me this and interestingly even the mridana player when talking about the instrument will say my teacher was very careful and used to make sure that the sound of the instrument is perfect yaar my teacher and he will say he goes to a repairer shop mridana makers were called repairers to two years ago they were called repairers so the repairer enna panuvaru repairer will provide what the musician wants so the musician is has acute sense of the instrument of how the music should be produced he will call the repairer or go to the shop and say idu panna adu panna sound seri illa and the tone seri all this 
So, in this entire conversation that I've had, in my entire career as a student and a musician, the maker doesn't exist. It is like going, taking my TVS uh, 50 to a mechanics place. Nobody cares about how the TV is. The TV is fifty made, also in the sky made, right? And here, just some nuts and bolts are adjusted. Apopatol matam, okay, fine. So, ninga for the singer yo, and the mari oru parvai yo, umulu matam. Yengu ko aje parvai tham. So, in the puttu ka angga army kudo. Yeh parvai yeh inger apni irukendra na angga na puttu ka army. Because na angga yeh umulu ko umulu ka share umulu pati. He was a great maker. 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 And the chapter is Jari Patti Nayi Nalu, performance Patti Nam Pesi. Padam and the Padam and the Isekri Vasikanga, Adukul and the Thorak Bukhil Pachin. So Yendu a connoted to you, even the Illa. So he didn't sort of learn that. Our memory real, they have no memory of them. So what does a maker do? A pure question getting. There is no, there is no active memory within the performing community. So the first thing that you do to destroy a human being is destroy the mind of the human being. If the mind doesn't exist, the human being doesn't exist. Then the human being is a tool, the body is just a tool. So when we say that we are very good at it, we are very good at it. We are very good at it. When we say that there are two sides, there is skin and it has to be tied. And it is very good at it. It is very good at it, it is very good at it. This bar is the most important thing. So the entire thing was to collapse the making into a physical activity and not an activity of the mind. Activity of creativity, of inventiveness, of innovating new ways of creating sound, of changing the sound of the last hundred years. sound only because of the maker of the last hundred years. Right? So in the Maraika Patta hidden rather hidden from not just sight, but hidden from any register of activity of the mind. That is why they are hidden. So even if they are present, I don't see them. Even if the Mridhana maker comes to the stage with the Mridhana player, it happens, Mridhana plays in the control room. I don't notice that human being. The Mridhana sometimes goes from the stage to the maker on the side who is making adjustments. But so what? He is a mechanic. So, Adhuga hidden. I have told you about it. Renda Adhuga is Sirpikal. This is a very interesting word. Is making an art? That is your question. Is it that we say here that we are Kalaya? Kalaya is not. That is a larger question. Come on. Kalaya is not. That is a larger philosophical question. That is what I am going to ask. But is making an art? That is your question. If you see how we have perceived the making of the Mridhana, perceived it as being bringing some different parts together. In the part, Arta Thor, Paso Thor, Irma Arta Thor, Jack Sogood. This is all the same part of the Mridhana. In the Puttara, I have a Vimarsana, which I found very interesting. And the Vimarsana, what do you think about it? Team Krishna and the Seri were in the Putana Mukiman Putuma in the Red Seri. Hana Murana the Seri of the two Piri Kalipali in the Red. Other than a Piri Kalari, other than a violin Seri Amadika. Is it like making a violin? Is it Stradivarius? This is just about trial and error. These guys kept trying three different kinds of skins for about 20 years, they figured it out. So it is very interesting for me when I read that criticism. It's saying that. You don't consider this as an act of creativity. And I think Kalai Abhin Rathu or act of creativity I interpret Pala in the point without going into the other conversation. So, Sirpikal, because there is almost a sculpting of what? Not the physical, sculpting of sound. That's the magic of the Mridhana. They sculpt the sound. 
Let me give you an example. So, say there are two of you who play the Murdha Maker. Suppose. Now, the Murdha Maker is not just making one Murdhagam or the same Murdhagam for both of you. The Murdhagam maker knows what your sound is, what your style is, what your stroke pattern is, what your emphasis is. So which means that the Murdhagam maker needs to understand the aesthetic body that you create through your play and what she creates through her. Okay. Now, how does a Murdhagam maker convert this into an instrument? That's the brilliance of this. The interesting part is no Mradhagam player knows about it themselves. So you ask a Mradhagam player to go to a Mradhagam maker's shop, which they do, and ask them what? They just say, the oh, sound is very like that. These are what you call abstract words. Sound is very like round the sound. But the maker understands every one of these expressions to materialize it into something that is actually heard. That is the sculpting of sound. So you actually create sound. The person who creates the sound is not the player, it's the maker. So you give the skin and the wood a sound body, which is not just the quality of the material, but also it has the ability to give me, the player, to internalize that sound and produce music. Music is the last aspect. So I think the sculpting word for me in this title was about sculpting sound. And and the maker matanati. You know, I spent four years with many makers. And I can tell you the way they understand the sound and the difference in sound. I can't hear it. In the sound of sound, it's not a good thing. 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 It's not a good நகரத்தில் <laughs> எனக்கு தெரிஞ்ச இசைக்கருவிகள் பார்த்தீங்கன்னு சொன்னால் பறை உரிமி கிட்டத்தட்ட நாதசுர மாதிரியான பீப்பின்னு சொல்லுவாங்க இது இந்த மாதிரியான இசைக்கருவிகள் தான் எனக்கு தெரிஞ்ச இசைக்கருவிகள் இந்த கருவிகள்லாம் இதெல்லாம் கிராமத்தில் திருவிழா போது வாசிப்பாங்க வீட்டு விசேஷங்களின் போது திருமணத்தின் போது இறப்பு சமயத்தில் இந்த மாதிரியான சமயத்தில் வாசிக்கக்கூடிய இசைக்கருவிகள் வந்து ஒரு ஒரு சந்தர்ப்பத்துக்கு ஏற்ற மாதிரி அதனுடைய இசை தாளம் இதெல்லாம் மாறும் அந்த இசைக்கருவிகளெல்லாம் எனக்கு இதில் இருக்கிற மாதிரி இப்போ மிருதங்கத்துக்கு இவர் சொல்கிற மாதிரி அல்லது வயலினுக்கு சொல்கிற மாதிரி அதை செய்கிறவங்க ஒருத்தர் வாசிக்கிறவங்க ஒருத்தர் கிடையாது செய்கிறவங்களே தான் வாசிப்பாங்க வாசிக்கிறவங்களே தான் செஞ்சுக்குவாங்க அதில் இருக்கக்கூடிய சொன்ன மாதிரி ஒரு ரிப்பேர் அப்படின்னு சொன்னால் உடனே அங்கே மேடையில் பின்னாடி ஒரு ஆள் நின்றுட்டு இருப்பார் அவர் வந்து சரி பண்ணுறது அதெல்லாம் கிடையாது நீங்கள் ரொம்ப சாதாரணமாக பார்த்தனா ஒரு பறை அடிக்கிறாங்க கொஞ்சம் நேரம் அடித்ததுக்கப்புறம் பார்த்தீங்கன்னு சொன்னால் அதை வந்து சூடு பண்ணுவாங்க தீ போட்டு போய் கொஞ்சம் காய்ச்சிக்குவாங்க இது எல்லாமே இந்த மாதிரியான சின்ன சின்ன வேலை இல்லாமல் அந்த வாசிக்கிறவங்களே செஞ்சுக்கிறாங்க அவங்களுக்குள்ளேயே ஒருத்தருக்கு ஒருத்தர் வேணா உதவி பண்ணிக்குவாங்களே தவிர வேற ஒரு ஆள் எங்கேயோ இருந்து செஞ்சு கொண்டு வந்து தர்றது இல்லை அவங்களே செஞ்சுக்கிறது தான் கிர இந்த இது நான் பார்த்த இசைக்கருவிகளுடைய விதம் ரொம்ப வித்தியாசமான இசைக்கருவிகள்லாம் உண்டு இன்னைக்கு நம்ம கிட்ட அது அவ்வளோ வழக்கம் இல்லாமல் போயிடுச்சு இப்போ நம்ம பறை உருவி இது தெரியுது நமக்கு இன்னைக்கு இங்கே வந்து இந்த திடும்புன்னு ஒரு இசைக்கருவி நிகழ்ச்சி இருந்து நினைக்கிறேன் 
அந்த திடுப்பு கொட்டுறது எங்கள் ஊரில் வந்து திடுப்பு கொட்டுறது அப்படின்னு சொல்லுவாங்க அது நீங்கள் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா ஏதாவது ஒரு அறிவிப்பை சொல்லும்போது அதை கொட்டிட்டு வந்து தான் சொல்லுவாங்க அது அந்த மாதிரி சில சந்தர்ப்பங்களில் மட்டும் அந்த இசைக்கருவியை பயன்படுத்துவாங்க இப்போ கிண்ணரம்னு ஒரு இசைக்கருவி இருக்கு இப்போ இது கிண்ணரம்ங்கிறது எனக்கே அது ஒரு இசைக்கருவின்னு முதல்ல தெரியாது எங்க ஊர்ல ஒரு பழமொழி சொல்லுவாங்க கிளவி பேச்சு கிண்ணரம் ஏறுமா அப்படி பாங்க அப்ப கிண்ணரம்ங்கிறது என்ன இது அர்த்தம் கூட எனக்கு அதுல தெரியாது இப்ப கிண்ணரம் அப்படின்னு சொல்றது அப்புறம் பாத்தீங்கன்னா அது ஒரு நரம் இசைக்கருவி அது எனக்கு அது ஒரு இசைக்கருவிங்கிற ஒரு விஷயம் வந்து எப்ப தெரிஞ்சதுன்னா எங்க ஊருக்கு எங்க வீட்டுக்கு ஒரு முறை ஒரு பிச்சை எடுக்கிறதுக்கு ஒரு ஆள் வந்தார் அவர் கையில வச்சுக்கிட்டு ஒரு புதுசான ஒரு இசைக்கருவி நான் பார்த்தது கிடையாது அதை வாசிச்சுட்டு வந்தார் அது நீங்க ஒரு ஒரு வகையில பாத்தீங்கன்னு சொன்னா பிடியில் மாதிரி இருக்கும் ஒரு பக்கம் ஒரு டையா இருக்கும் அப்புறம் நரம்பு கட்டியிருப்பாங்க அந்த மாதிரியான ஒரு இசைக்கருவி அது அது அப்ப கூட அந்த மாதிரி அந்த ஒரு இசைக்கருவி வித்தியாசமானது அப்படிங்கிற எண்ணம்லாம் இல்லை அவர் எங்க வீட்டுக்கு வந்து எங்க வீட்டுல எங்க அம்மா ஒரு சுரக்க சுரக்கொடி வித ஒணி சுரக்கொடி வந்து எங்க ஓல வீடு ஓல வீடு மேல முழுக்க சுரக்கொடி படர்ந்து இருந்தது நிறைய காய்கள் இருந்தது அதை பார்த்துட்டு அவர் வந்து அதுல காஞ்சிருக்கக்கூடிய விதக்கி விட்டுருந்த ஒரு ரெண்டு காயை பார்த்துட்டு அது எனக்கு கொஞ்சம் கொடுங்க அப்படின்னு கேட்டார் அது எதுக்கு அப்படின்னு சொன்னா அவர் என்னன்னா இந்த இந்த கருவி செய்யறதுக்கு அது வேணும் அப்படின்னார் அந்த சுரக்காய் வந்து நீங்க எத்தனை பேர் பார்த்துருக்கீங்க எனக்கு தெரியாது அந்த சுரக்காய்க்கு பேரே கிண்ணர சுரக்காய் சுரையில வந்து இப்போ ரெண்டு வகையான சுரைக்காயை நீங்க கடைகள்ல பார்க்கலாம் பாம்பு சுரக்கான்னு சொல்லுவாங்க அப்படி நீளமா இருக்கும் அது இன்னொன்னு கழுத்து சுரக்கான்னு சொல்லுவாங்க கழுத்து இருக்கும் ஒரு குடுவை மாதிரி இருக்கும் The question I asked him was, what are the kind of instruments and artists that you grew up with or grew up around and what was your experience? So he spoke about uh, a few instruments uh, like the Parai, Urmi and he specifically spoke about the Kinnar. Before that he made a statement for, to which I will respond later. He said that as far as he knew in his village, anybody who played the instrument made the instrument. There was no maker and player. The maker and the player were the same. And then he speaks about uh, Kinnar, which is an instrument made of... Uh, sorry, what is it? Ha, ah, bottom. Yeah. Uh, and a specific kind of wood, which is called Kinnar Sorka, which is the name of the instrument. And uh, he spoke about how a person who played the Kinnar came to his house and specifically asked for a dry one. because he makes it so just to give an uh, description the resonating chamber of that is from the sorga okay and if you know there's something called the miraj tanpura the miraj tanpura also has actually a pumpkin which is the resonating chamber so there is tradition of using either wood or a uh, kind of uh, wood அந்த அந்த கிண்ணர சுரக்காய் எப்படி இருக்கும்னு பார்த்தீங்கன்னா ஒரு சின்ன அந்த பூசணிக்காய் இருக்கு பாருங்க அது மாதிரி இருக்கும் ஒரு வட்ட வடிவில் இருக்கும் அந்த அது அந்த சுரக்காய்க்கு பேரே கிண்ணர சுரக்காய் அது ரொம்ப நல்ல சமையலுக்கு ரொம்ப ருசியாக இருக்கும் அது அதனால் எங்கள் அம்மா தொடர்ந்து அது விதை வச்சுட்டே இருப்பாங்க அது இப்போ இது காஞ்சி மேலே இருக்கிறத அவர் பார்த்துட்டாரு பார்த்துட்டு கேட்டார் அது வேணும் அப்படின்ட்டு எங்கள் அம்மா சொன்னாங்க அது விதைக்கி விட்டுருக்கோம் அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டு அவர் சொன்னார் எனக்கு விதை வேண்டாம் விதை நான் உங்களுக்கு எடுத்து கொடுத்தேன் அந்த குழுவை மட்டும்தான் எனக்கு வேணும் அப்படின்னு சொல்லி கேட்டார் சரி அறுத்துருங்க அப்படின்னா அவர் அதை அறுத்து எடுத்துட்டு நீங்கள் மேலே பார்த்தீங்கன்னா நல்லா அழகாக ஒரு சின்ன வட்டம் போட்டு கீறி அது எடுங்க அது மேட்டுக்கூடிய அந்த காம்பு பகுதியை எடுத்துட்டு அது உள்ள இருக்கக்கூடிய விதையெல்லாம் எடுத்து எங்கிட்ட கொடுத்துட்டேன் அந்த அந்த குழுவையே எடுத்துட்டேன் அது நீங்க அப்புறம் பாத்தீங்கன்னா அவர் வச்சிருந்த அந்த இசைக்கருவியில் இருக்கக்கூடிய குழு அது அப்போ ஒரு அந்த 
சுரைக்காய் இல்ல அதுல இருந்து தான் அந்த இசை கருவி செய்யறாரு அவரே செய்ய செய்யக்கூடிய நல்ல இசை வரக்கூடிய ஒரு கருவி தான் அதுக்கப்புறம் நான் இலக்கியம் படிக்க ஆரம்பிச்சதுக்கு அப்புறம் பாத்தீங்கன்னா கிண்ணரம் அப்படின்னு ஒரு இசைக்கருவி இருக்குது பழந்தமிழ் இசைக்கருவி அப்படின்னு வருது நாலாயிரம் திவிய பிரபந்தத்துல வருது சங்க இலக்கியத்துல பெரும்பாலான படையில வருது கிண்ணரம்னே வருது அதுல அதுக்கு என்ன போடுறாங்கன்னா அகராதி இதுல எல்லாம் வந்து அந்த இசைக்கருவி பத்தி தெரியாம அதுல எல்லாம் வந்து ஒரு நரம்பிசை கருவி இது ஒரு வகை யாழ் அப்படின்னு தான் அதுக்கு அர்த்தம் கொடுக்குறாங்க ஆனா அது இன்னைக்கும் நடைமுறையில இருக்கக்கூடிய ஒரு கருவி அப்படிங்கிறத நான் கண்ணால பார்த்தேன் இது மாதிரியான விதவிதமான இசைக்கருவிகளை பார்க்கலாம் நீங்க சேகண்டி அப்படின்னு ஒரு ஒரு கருவி உண்டு நீங்க பூஜை சமயத்துல கோயில்ல வந்து முனியப்பன் மாரியம்மன் இந்த மாதிரியான சாமிக்கு பூஜை பண்ணும் போது பார்த்தீங்கன்னா சேகண்டி ஒரு கையில அது பித்தளையில அப்படி வட்டமா இருக்கும் அது அப்படி ஒரு கையில பிடிச்சிட்டு அடிச்சுட்டே வரும் மணி அடிக்கிற மாதிரி இருக்கும் ஆனா அதுல ஒரு தாளம் இருக்கும் அது சேகண்டின்னு பேரு அது அந்த பூஜைக்கு மட்டும் பயன்படுத்தக்கூடிய இசைக்கிறது இப்படி பல விதமான இசைக்கருவிகள் வந்து அஹ் இருக்கு நம்ம இதுல கூத்துல பயன்படுத்தக்கூடிய இதெல்லாம் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா அது நம்ம செவியல் இசையில பயன்படுத்துக்கிற கருவிகள் கிடையாது நிறைய கருவிகள் முகவீனைன்னு ஒண்ணு இருக்கு அதெல்லாம் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா அந்த நாட்டார் கலைகள்ல மட்டும் பயன்படுத்தக்கூடியது தான் இப்படி பல இசைக்கருவிகள் இருக்கு இந்த இசைக்கருவிகள்ல எல்லாத்துலையும் நான் பார்த்த வகையில என்னன்னா அதை யாரு வாசிக்கிறாங்களோ பயன்படுத்துறாங்களோ அவங்களே தான் அதை செஞ்சுக்குவாங்க அப்படித்தான் வேற வந்து இது இந்த பீப்பின்னு சொல்லக்கூடியதை கூட அவங்களே தான் செஞ்சுக்குவாங்க ஒரு சின்ன இது வேணா அதுக்கு வந்து ஆசாரிய கொஞ்சம் பயன்படுத்துவாங்க அவ்வளவுதான் மற்றபடி அவங்களே செஞ்சுக்கக்கூடியது தான் ஆனா இப்போ செவியல் இசையில வரும்போது ரெண்டும் வேற வேறையா இருக்குதுங்கிறது எனக்கு அது ரொம்ப நம்ம கவனம் பெறாத ஒரு விஷயம் அது இவர் சொன்னாரு இது மிருதங்கம் செய்யறதுல மட்டும் என்ன ஸ்பெஷல் இருக்கு வயலினும் இன்னொருத்தர் செஞ்சு செய்யறாங்க வேற ஒவ்வொரு இசைக்கருவியுமே இன்னொருத்தர் செய்யறாங்க வாசிக்கிறாங்க அப்படின்ட்டு பொதுவாக இசைக்கருவிகள்ல தமிழ்ல வந்து மூன்று வகையான இசைக்கருவி சொல்லுவாங்க தோல் கருவி தோலை பயன்படுத்தி செய்யக்கூடிய கருவி இன்னொன்று நரம்பு இசைக்கருவிகள் நரம்புகளை பயன்படுத்தி செய்யக்கூடிய கருவி இன்னொன்று துளைக்கருவி புலாங்குழல் மாதிரியான துளைக்கருவி ஓட்டை போட்டு அதை வாசிக்கக்கூடிய கருவி மூணு இது பண்ணுவாங்க இப்ப இந்த புத்தகம் படித்ததுக்கு அப்புறம் எனக்கு என்ன தோணுச்சுன்னா இப்போ இந்த நரம்பு கருவி துளைக்கருவிகள் பண்ணுறதுக்கும் இந்த தோல் வச்சு பண்ணுறதுக்குமான அந்த கருவிகள் பண்ணுறதுக்குமான வித்தியாசம் என்னங்கிறது அதை நான் யோசிக்க ஆரம்பித்தேன் நீங்கள் வந்து இந்த தோல் கருவி மிருதங்கம் இல்லை இரண்டு மூன்று தோல் பயன்படுத்துகிறாங்க அப்போ நீங்கள் இந்த வித்தியாசத்தை எப்படி உணர்ந்தீங்க அதை பற்றி இது நான் சொல்லுங்க the last part of what he said. He spoke about many kinds of instruments that he has uh, heard, seen, um, which were part of temple rituals, um, which were part of social events, etc. And uh, if you see how instruments are divided, they are taken as either skin instruments or uh, string instruments, but the word he uses is naramba, which is actually far more accurate because at one time, string instruments, they were not using metal. Many times they were using gut. So the violin, for example, strings were made of gut. So just to tell you, it was not vegetarian too. Um, and the third is, of course, aerophones, flutes, and other sort of things. Um, the two things I want to respond to. One is, you know, this whole idea that's very important in what he said, is how the maker and the player is the same. So the first question is, why are Brandon's playing the brother? Obvious question, right? So we'll come to that question. But if you look at this, if you look at social hierarchy, as you move upward, is when the separation between the maker and the player begins. So if you go to look at any instrument used by the Dalit community, the maker and the player are the same. Okay? They have to make their instrument, and this is true of all tribal instruments too. Okay? Uh, if you go to some places, I know, for example, certain tribes are called upon by other communities to say, can you please source skin for us? Can you please make the instrument for us? As you go upward, the separation begins. At certain stages, certain parts of the making 
the middle section community will do. Set back to people from the Dalit community. And as you go further up in terms of social hierarchy, the making and the player is entirely separated. So, for example, the player or, the, or if you say a person who plays the veena, never makes the veena. It's the Asari community or the community that is part of woodwork who's making the veena. This is true of any other wood, wood based instrument. And now the question is I have actually a, a two, two parts to this to answer. Not answer to respond. Something I've been thinking about for a while, and I was telling you this in the afternoon when I spoke to him is Is there a difference philosophically and aesthetically between a maker who is the player and a player who is not the maker? It's an intriguing thought. What is my relationship with the instrument? Is it a different relationship? Am I hearing, am I not hearing something? Is the sound itself a body of a different creation? If I'm only a brother player, I've never made the brother. I have never done what is required. So, what is the sound I hear? What is the sound I don't hear? Okay. If I am the maker, is the sound a more, in many ways, a visceral existence? Right. This, I think, is a this is an interesting thing to ruminate about. I don't think we have answers to this, but I think it's, a, it's an important thing to think about and what happens to the way a Mridhanga player hears the sound compares to a Mridhanga maker who is a player hears the sound. I think it's, a, it's an important question. And we can ask the same question between a Paray artist who plays the Paray and a Brahmin who plays a Mridhanga. Is there a difference in the body, in what is felt here? Right? Uh, now he asked me, the question he asked me was also about is there a difference between a, the makers, I mean, between the skin instrument versus the wood or the strings? Of course there is. That's one of the reasons why this book, the people have asked me, why do you write about the Veena maker? Why do you write about the flute maker? I mean, not that you shouldn't, of course. And the simple answer is skin. And that's the difference. The fact that the instrument requires sourcing a certain kind of skin, requires the killing of an animal. So, a certain things I want to uh, make it very clear: you cannot make a skin instrument from a dead animal. That is a naturally dead animal, and the reason is very simple. Any maker will tell you that if the animal is already dead, the blood clots and the skin becomes like cardboard. So what you need to do is actually kill the animal and you need to drain the blood and then you get the skin. Okay, so anybody who's told you it's dead animals is just lying to you. Not lying, has no clue because no player has ever seen this happen. Now, no person from Either the Brahmin community or from say the Savyanala community who also play with them, want to associate with blood, want to associate with the act of skin, blood, the entire environment that is around this. And therefore, the best thing for you to see is not to talk about it. And in this, I remember one maker who told me this. He said, for you know, he said to these audiences. <laughs> When they listen to Mardhanam, they say, Ah, oh, divine. That's all they care about. Why do they need to know about flesh, blood, goo, and all that? They don't need to know. They don't need to, they're not interested in all this. But the fact is that divinity comes only with the killing, <laughs> only with the oozing of blood, and only with the fact that one community is in a way socially conditioned and pushed to making that instrument. And you depend on that maker for your divinity. Another maker told me, for the Murdangam to enter the puja room, I have to be in divinity. But I can't enter the puja room. 
another maker too. So another thing, please also remember the Murugangam. The biggest problem in the Murugangam is the fact that cow skin is used. That's the big problem. Goat skin is okay. You can do with it. But cow skin is like holy cow. <laughs> right? <laughs> but what he won't tell you is even more important things about it. That the cow should have delivered at least three times. So the cow can't be too old or too young. So they, the cow is chosen. The buffalo is chosen. The goat is chosen in an abattoir. It should have delivered because the most, the sound producing part of the skin is the, I forget the English word for it, best meat is also from there. I forget, I'm just keep not getting it now. Uh, but it's, it's basically just below the hind legs and the stomach. And the fact that elasticity because of pregnancy makes that skin far more resonating. You need to have that cow or the buffalo or the goat, all female, to have delivered at least thrice. Right? Now, the playing community, I mean, preens about its purity. When you preen about it and you believe that's where you are, this doesn't exist. There's another very interesting thing is on terminologies, and I always, you know, that's another very important thing, is there are two words, tol, tol is skin, right? There's another word that a murder, the maker and the player use, which is tat. Now, tat literally in Tamil means plate, usually referring to tat that you eat in general, in colloquial usage, right? Now, what they do in an abattoir, just cut the long story short, is after you skin the buffalo or the cow, you have to dry it under the sun, you have to take out the fat from the inside of it. Uh, it's a long drawn process and then there is, and then before you take it home, after which there is more processing, is you cut it into circles, okay? In one buffalo skin you can get about, I think I, my memory is right, 14 or about 14 or 15 round pieces, okay? <laughs> now the question is, when does the tool become tactic? That's a very interesting thing. Then the terminology, when do they stop calling it tool and start off calling it tactic? Right? It becomes tactic only after it gets out of the abattoir. Other go tol. It has to get out of the abattoir, it has to be dry, and then it becomes hard, then it becomes tight. To the player, it's always tight, it's not tol. Art tol ni kundu vanga, nalla tatte ni. This, in this language, there is a clear separation between the maker and the player. So, it is the skin that is the big, big issue in any kind of percussion instrument. Is the fact that it involves blood, it involves skin, it involves all that is required to create it. And you create a, and the social hierarchy that we are so entrenched in allows you so easily to completely push that away from any conversation, which is why even I didn't see it. Which is why even I didn't see it. Right? So in the theatre way, the separation, the tolls are the terrible. And the toll and the ratham, the in the vision, we have to do a social strategy. Right? So and this is the case, but this is the case, this is the case, this is the case, this is the case, so I just lead on to it. Right? There's another important difference which you need to remember. If I bought a vena from a store, okay? My relation or from a maker directly, not a store. My relationship with the maker ends that day. Maximum once in a year I have to change the string. For which most likely I don't need to go to the maker. Unless there is a crack or a break, my relationship ends then. Now, for the now, it cannot end at all. Tell you why. There is a black spot on a murdam, if you are all seen on the on the, on the dominant side. It's called sadam. It's called sadam because really they use sadam. They use boiled rice. So, so you know, uh, kind of a metal filings you mix for it becomes a black kind of a substance which is applied 
with the tongue. Idu vandu after three four concerts you will start falling. Udru udru. So that has to be replaced. Then the skin, the three layered skin on the right and three layered skin on the right called it's called the moot. Moot will also uru ar maasathriyo depending on style unga style playing abhi irukko you will have to change the moot which means you need new skin. So the maker and the player are in contact with each other almost every second day. This is where it gets very complicated. So uru thodar irukku. For me this book was also important to look at that what is this relationship this relationship between a maker who comes from a marginalized community and a player who comes from the topmost seated position in social hierarchy in cultural hierarchy but they have to meet each other they have to talk to each other they must have some common language but yet everybody knows where the lines are drawn so there is this very very complicated exchange happening not today it's been happening for 100 years so in the thorambu enna in the thorambu la one more irk ana and irka abdul question a very difficult question one more yana or thorambu da samudayathile irukra oru enna the samudaya structural oppressiveness அதுக்குள்ள இருக்கிற ஒரு தொடர்பு ஆமாங்கிங் these were also i think very important questions for me oh what is happening there is there and has it changed ipo and the kaalathu in the kaalathu are there changes between relationships in the 1950s and 60s and between now so in the mari vishayangalu ninga na pesum bodhu konjam thottinga so ore isikiriye vaasikiravungalai sinjikiradhu இல்லை வேற யாரோ செஞ்சு கொடுத்து வாசிக்கிறதுக்கும் இதுக்கு அந்த இசைக்கருவிக்கும் அவங்களுக்குமான அந்த நெருக்கம் ஒரு மிருதங்கத்துக்கு மட்டும்தான் அப்படி வயலின் அந்த மாதிரியான கருவி எல்லாத்தையும் இந்த இடைவெளியிலும் ஒரு விஷயம் இருக்கு ஒரே ஒரு விஷயம் நான் மிருதகம் mari kerugikalukku or let's make a different point because and the karmiko and the or vise vaasikarangalukku ah and the tol saarnda or connection ipo or veena vaasikarangala neenga strings ah thoodi podu innu strings podu so actually and the instrument ku and the person ku adhe maadhiri illa thodarbu illa na solla but the tol ipo nama tamil la mrada vaasikalla kai தோல் but there is in my my argument is actually there is no relationship hmm avail avail there is only relationship between the hand of the player and the hand of the maker the maker has a relationship with the skin so if there was no maker in between whose hand did not understand my hand there is no connection with the skin so there is this gap which is i think very interesting think about it. unfortunately you don't have as many makers who become players so probably none for very obvious social hierarchical reasons not that they haven't tried they've tried learning but the discrimination happens in the not obvious way of saying even if the poor this is enough for him he's anyway not going to become a player so you only teach that person so much 
Well, this would teach me everything you have because you presume I'm a genius. Right? So, if you are a kid, you are a kid. 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 But something to think about. அப்போ இதில் இன்னொரு முக்கியமான ஒரு விஷயம் நான் உங்கள்கிட்ட கேட்கணும்னு எனக்கு தோணுச்சு இதில் இந்த மிருதங்கம் மேக்கர்ஸ் இருக்காங்க பாருங்கள் அதில் வந்து ரொம்ப குறைச்சலான பேர் தான் பெண்கள் இருக்காங்க அதுவும் ஒருத்தர் ரெண்டு பேர் தான் வராங்க அதில் நீங்கள் ஒரு ஃபீல்ட் ஒர்க் பண்ணி கலெக்ட் பண்ணுறதில் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா அவ்வளோதான் இருக்காங்க இப்போ அது வந்து பெண்கள் அந்த மிருதங்கத்தை உருவாக்குறது அதை செய்யறது கஷ்டம் அப்படிங்கிற இப்படையில் குறைச்சலாக இருக்காங்களா இல்லை வேறு என்ன ரீசன் அதே போல் இப்போ நீங்கள் கச்சேரிகள்லேயும் இப்போ வயலின் வந்து ஆணும் வாசிக்கிறாங்க பெண்ணும் வாசிக்கிறாங்க அதே சமயம் ஒரு மிருதங்கத்தையோ கடமோ அது பெண்கள் வாசிக்கிறது இல்லை ரொம்ப ஆமாம் அப்போ அந்த அது அந்த வித்தியாசம் என்ன அடிப்படையில் இருக்கு pretty obvious uh, his question is to translate he said that he asked me that he noticed that in the book there are very few women mridanga makers uh, i only mentioned two in this book and both actually work with skin um and similarly in percussion instruments there are very few women playing percussion instrument and this is not just true of any one tradition it's a world over phenomenon right and so he said what are the reasons so i'll, I'll tackle the first part So if you ask any Mridanga maker, they first they kept telling me, you can do it very well. Ladies are not going to do it. Every Mridanga maker does this. Ladies are not going to do it. Very well, man. There is strength. A lot of strength. Women don't have the strength. No, they don't have the strength. They don't have the strength. They don't have the strength. By the way, not that all the maker is some big body builder or anything. Just to put it on the record. And what they told me, that's one of the things that helped me. So I said, what's the vision? So in the, this mixture I told you that is metallic part which is used with soda comes from a stone in the Tanjavar area, they call it Kitangal. Now this Kitangal is some kind of a volcanic rock. In the book, in fact, what we did is we actually did a chemical analysis and a material analysis of those stones. Uh, between the stone in Tanjavar, between the stone in Palagat, between the stone in, in Vizag, because each of them, of course, like any field, by the way, each of them believe they are the best. And there's huge competition between the Tanjava school of making, between the Balgat school of making. So I was curious to see which stone, was there really any difference in terms of what there is in the stone. All the stones are heavy on iron, different kind of fence basically. So they told me, Lady Sita is a help from Vada. Yet the help from Vada? And the Kallu Vadekarri. Now, if any of you try making that stone, it's nearly impossible to ask. It requires a lot of strength. So I asked this maker, you said, you said, I have no strength. I mean, damn, they still sit and break the stone. What are you talking about? He said, come on, come on, come on, come on. But I'm going to put it on the other side. No, I'm not going to put it on the other side. So there too, the reason women are not allowed to make it, in some way, in their heads at least, is that it requires going to the abattoir. It requires interacting in that kind of an environment. It requires hard skill work. But there were two women. who did this work and there's an anecdote that I always repeat before I tell the story because it's in the book too. I was in Palakkad and I went to meet the makers, I went to uh, his house. We had a one hour conversation and as I was leaving, he introduced me to Gita and he said, this is Gita and in front of a house, which was a neighboring house, there were six four skins of buffaloes dry i saw it i said hello to gita and i left i came back to my hotel in palakkad and i was calling sanita who is my wife she so i said so what happened tell me what happened so i described to her the entire interview and I, then i said you know i met this woman called gita and i told her this and she said you interviewed her right i had it I had walked to your home too. Even I did not recognize her as a maker at that moment. So I went, I darted back of course, within 20 minutes. I called and said, Geeta, can I talk to you now? And we did this interview. Geeta is the only woman who processes skin. 
for both Murdangam and Mandal in Kerala. Okay? She works with one person, the Abitwa, I forget his name, who gives her the supplies, the skin, and she does all the skinning work, every part of the work. Similarly, there's one lady called Madhava. She's from Rasipuram actually. And she was the single supplier of goat skin. So Ambur is very famous for goat skin, very famous for biryani also. And uh, she supplied for years goat skin. She would take a bus, bring a load of goat skin, go to every maker's shop in Chennai and sell them skin and goat. Now her son is taken over. These are the only two women in this entirely male dominant. And both these women were skin procurers and worked with skin. And they belong to very different generations. Gita is in about, I think, 30s. Madhavala is pretty much retired. She was in late 50s or so, 60s. And when you listen to Madhavala's story, so when these are all men having these shops, going there early in the morning, you know, negotiating a price, making sure the right skin is supplied, it's, it's Astonishing of what she, what she did for herself. Similarly, Gita. I mean, Gita was, was incredible. And when, then when, you, when I spoke to her, I mean, how she got into this business is she, had, she lived in Coimbatore and she spoke about how her father was falling ill. And I'm recollecting now, I could be not exactly on, on, on target in terms of what I'm saying. But I remember that he was unwell and he was waiting for his son to come back to do some skin work and she said, can't I do it? And she started doing the work. So these are the only two women that do the work and I think it's very obvious social reasons why you don't see them. There is also another woman, sorry, it's a third person, another intriguing person. Now, she is a Karnataka, she is a Brahmin woman. Okay? Her husband uh, came from a village where they did a, a kind of a Buddha, that's a different story altogether. And they come to Bangalore and he sets up shop. He starts learning to play, we make the Murdagam and Tabla. They still have a store called the Shanti Tabla store. And he dies and she becomes the master maker. Okay. And of course, what happens is their family completely disowns them because they are working with skin. They'll have nothing to do with them. And, but, she would never go to the Abhidwa, or he would never go. Clean, a cured skin would be supplied. So there's a, even there, there was that clear, very clear separation on what the Brahmin family would do. So it was already quasi cut to put it simply, by the time the skin came. So this is, these are the only three women that I encountered. Uh, and I don't think in the past they have been any more. Women playing the uh, percussion instrument is a similar problem. It's a problem that starts from even how you perceive a woman should be seated. I've, I've heard people tell me, so I don't know if you know how Mardana plays this. I'll try and show it you now. So my leg is like this, my second leg will be here, and the Mardana is here. So I lean like this. It's very ungainly for a woman. Lifting her leg and placing it like this. I have heard men say this to me. Allah will Or a woman playing the gutter. You forget about her playing quality. That even comes later. The sight of a gutter. There are exceptions, there are stories. There is this very good gutter player called Sukanya. She lives in Bangalore. She has been sent back home from the backstage. With you. She arrived at a concert. And there are many Mridangam artists who will not share a stage with the Gatam artist who is a woman. She comes to the concert and she's told, I'm sorry, you have to head back home because this guy will not share the stage with you. Right? So there's a lot of things and one, one, another story which happened at my concert, I'll never forget is there was this girl who accompanied me and uh, she had short hair and uh, I think she was wearing a, a kurta and Pajama that day, and uh, the, her name is not a giveaway. You can't recognize it to be a woman's name. And the concert went off well, and she got a huge applause, and it, she was a hit. And a person came straight to her for the concert. Oh, you're a woman. 
It's the first thing that person told me. <laughs> um, so just to come back to this question, um, the relationship between the maker and yeah. the player. So this, I think it is uh, very intriguing. In the sense, you at some point you spoke about the language between the maker and the player. So it's very intriguing about that language. So which language is you? Whose language is actually used? Very, I mean, it's, a, it's not just language, also food. I'll the tell you food, food example. Yeah. So, so you know. of course, it, I mean, if you speak to most Murdanga makers, if I speak to most Murdanga makers, I'm correct myself. The language of the way Tamil will be spoken by the maker to me will be really different. They'll speak brand to me. Um, which is not necessarily true when you hear them interacting with other people. So through generations, what you also see is that the language they use. For example, when they had, you know, like food. In fact, I had this huge debate with two makers. It's in the book. Uh, one was Kumar, the other is Melis. And over the making, I said, okay, tell me what to eat for breakfast and lunch. And I had this conversation. And one of the makers called his wife Atakan. Atakari is the Brahmin term for wife. So I said, Ninga Sunenga, what do you say? He said, Atakari. He said, Ninga Atakari. So we had this entire conversation there. We had this you know, almost argument conversation saying, so for example, their food habits have changed. Many of them don't eat beef. No. They eat mutton, they eat chicken, they don't eat beef. I mean, they make, they, they make the brother, that's a different thing. So the language is, of course, changed. There's a lot of Brahminical usages. There's a lot of, uh, you know, Sorin Sulamata, Sadhana Sulamata. Many, many things have changed and that obviously is because of social error. See, another thing we should remember in, in this is their entire world of profession is in this culture. So there is this huge contradiction that has existence Right there. It's not like there is another world to which you have access. Right? So your entire professional cultural world is the world of Carnatic music. Okay? Your professional existence depends on that world. Right? And it's not one generation, almost six generations of this. So there is, in within this oppressive environment, there is a conditionality that has happened through generations in which the language has changed, in which the food has changed, not the other way around, of course. Right? So it's a, it's a very messy space because also they love making the Vardhavi. Now how do you factor that in now? Right? That makes it even complicated. It's not like the maker will tell you, I don't want to do this anymore in my life. I'm going to do something else. Because he's saying, Patikla, the sound won't bring a Patikla. There is this immense pride in creating sound. So you're negotiating that act, which is between the maker and the instrument, which is placed within a very oppressive social environment, which is constantly at your head and you recognize that too. Right? So it's this very, very, so the language changes, uh, the, the terms, I mean, there are technical terms. In fact, there's an entire, I mean, Murugan and I have discussed this a lot. The term, by the way, there's an entire list of terms that they especially use regarding Vrathana making. For example, var, amina, it can be, var is basically a, a thong of any kind. But there are six different kinds of var, depending on which part of the Vrathana that is used. So there's a vocabulary that they have created. It's their vocabulary. Okay? The Vrathana player, most of them don't know most of the vocabulary. They know some of it. It's, it's a very, very messy, messy, messy space. Uh, so that's why I asked about language. In the sense, like, how do they communicate? In the sense, probably, uh, you know, the person knows who makes it. He knows better. He has a better, probably, vocabulary, technicalities, you know, the technical vocabulary about well, skill. Course, yeah. 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 But he will use the player's vocabulary. Exactly. Okay. He will use the player's vocabulary. The player is actually incapable of describing what they want. I've seen this hundred times. Yedu or Serila? This is something I heard. Yedu or Serila? Like, what does Yedu? I mean, I'm not saying, what does it even mean? But the maker knows Yedu. Yedu, if I said Yedu or Serila, and if he said Yedu or Serila, the Yedu will have a meaning out of the room. 
How do you know? I don't know. Tell you. The, especially the really classy makers who know their job, done it for thirty years. They know it immediately, right? They so that's what I'm saying. It's, it's fascinating how they've transferred that feeling. It's a feeling. Right? I feel something is wrong. They trans. They are able to understand, translate that into a material action, which I think is genius, truly genius. One. But they just figured it out. Through years and years, they figured it out. Kali Puri Mani ka aur nitni abhi padna ho, mood adi ko nitni hai. Mere ko shanaar ko mood adi ko nitni hai. I know what I mean. So that's why there is a relationship also, and then that's why Kali Puri Mani or Mere ko shanaar ko only depend on X. Always. But that dependency is actually that's yeah, it's exactly that depend. So, it's an yeah. invisible dependency. It is a in a way a violent dependency. Too, right? So it's it's a very 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 difficult space for them to be placed in. Yeah. The putta ka vanda the kapra on the say over that thing. After all, in the middle of the makers thing, I am going to get a this kind of a idhar banana or a reaction. I am not doing this. This is the idhar part of the idhar part. So he said, "What has been the responses from the the musicians community and the makers community post the publication of the book?" Uh, well, when the book was just about to come out, there was a huge hue and cry about this book uh, because an excerpt that was published in the Hindu uh, spoke about an anecdote that was told to me by Palghat Mani, the great. Brother, his 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 son. And I'll tell you the anecdote because it's I think an interesting anecdote, and I thought I I thought it was a very interesting story. So Palghat Maniya, being a conservative person and an old world person, at some point of time gets into this quandary in his mind, saying, you know, how can I play an instrument that is made from cowskin? Isn't there a problem? Here? I first found it fascinating that there was at least one brother from player who thought of it in that manner. That's fascinating, right? That this thought struck that person. Okay, it struck this person. So what do you do about it? He said, "I should ask somebody." So he decided to go to the Kanchi Pontiff Shankaracharya and ask him. Then he feels asking skin-related questions to a Pontiff is probably not the right thing to do. <laughs> so he decides and says, "Okay, I'll go and meet Raja Ji. See that Gopal Chand, who, of course, even Gandhi considered his advisor, mentor, etc." So he goes to see the Raja Gopal Chand. Or this is the story. The story is important. <coughs> What do I do? So he says he gives him a third problem. Rishi mono, nadi mono, paata prati. Now the problem means don't go to the. How do you translate this? Okay. Uh, don't go to the source of. Don't search for the source of the river or the source of your ancestry. Rishi Mono actually is your ancestry, and I found that response fascinating. So in that part, I discuss. I actually counter argue this and say the reason Raja Ji can conveniently say this because what there is in the Rishi Mono is something that makes you uncomfortable. So you decide to say that don't go and search for these things. Now this is published, and of course the launch was almost cancelled. Blah blah blah. And there were many people who created hue and cry about this book, saying it was anti-Brahmin, anti-Hindu, all kinds of things. Now, the interesting things that have happened is is fascinating. Not the older generation, but a lot of the younger generation of Marathi players have read this book, and many of them have circled back to me after three months, four months, five months, six months. Some coming and telling me, "What do you mean that there is any discrimination? I drink tea with my." Make her every time. So then we have to go to this, have this discussion of how that really does not make a difference. And just because you feel better about yourself, that itself is caste, right? Fundamentally, that you feel great that you have team with your maker is it is built in the structure which is caste. So, but at least the fact that that discussion is happening, I think, still is an important discussion. There have been players who come back and said, "Well, I hope to change. I hope to have a different relationship." They have started having larger conversations with the makers. They start listening to the makers. The word maker is now coming vogue. 
which is vocabulary wise a complete shift from repairer to maker. So I think that there has been engagement from the younger generation. I didn't expect much from either my generation or the generation before me. Uh, I didn't expect it. So I mean, either we never know where Maria will be. வெளியிடுறதுக்கேட்டாங்க <laughs> describing chapter by chapter and saying what there is including the conflicts between them mm-hmm. that exists because the book also talks about conflicts within the communities i mean there there are, there is a dalit community then there is a another community that's slightly higher in the hierarchy and there's lack of conversations there there's discrimination between the chennai maker and the tanjore maker all kinds of things happen there but after the tamil book came is when they actually called me and a few of them had a chat with me and until now i have not heard any maker come and say that you completely mis interpreted or misrepresented anything i think uh, there was one complaint that came yes actually from saudi's <coughs> sarah saudi's wife where in the translation there was a problem so she said no you translate what i said wrong we correct it we correct it uh, otherwise i think what they have found they feel very strongly that this book has told their story and uh, does describe their feelings and there are many parts in the book where i do not reveal who the maker is i have used pseudonyms uh, because they have existing relationships with players and their profession depends on that so there are quotes that go in third person sometimes and sometimes with change names i overall our uh, response has been until now been they really like it but what process is it now to thoda kada padikira mari adu that's all so to come back to uh, first question the relationship between uh, tm krishna and karman mundan enga aarambichathu where did it start you know so i'm sure everybody knows about a very uh, interesting important ambedkar sindh <laughs> So in 2021, if I'm not mistaken, that song was 20. 20, 2020, 20, for 150th, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20
நான் அப்போ வந்து அதுலேருந்து கொஞ்சம் விடுபடுறதுக்கு எத்தனையும் பல விதமான முயற்சிகள் செஞ்சேன் அதில் ஒன்று வந்து தமிழில் இருக்கக்கூடிய மரபான ஒரு செய்யுள் வடிவம் விருத்தம் அப்படின்ட்டு கம்பராமாயணம்லாம் அந்த விருத்த பா வடிவத்தில் இருக்கும் அது மாதிரி அந்த வடிவத்தில் கொஞ்சம் எழுதினேன் நான் அதில் ஒரு கிட்டத்தட்ட ஒரு நாற்பது விருத்தங்கள் வந்து எழுதியிருந்தேன் அப்போ எனக்கு என்ன தோணுச்சுன்னா அது கிருஷ்ணாவுடைய கச்சேரி கேட்டெல்லாம் ஒரு இது ஒவ்வொரு ஒவ்வொரு இதுலேயும் வரும் சரி மற்ற கர்நாடக இசை பாடகர்களும் ஒரு விருத்தம் பாடுவாங்க ஒரு ஒரு கச்சேரிலேயும் அதனால் எனக்கு இதில் ஒரு ரெண்டு விருத்தம் அவங்களுக்கு பிடிச்ச மாதிரியான விருத்தம் இசைக்கு பொருந்துச்சுன்னா எனக்கு பாடி கொடுங்க எனக்கு கேட்கறது வேணும்னு சொன்னேன் நான் இப்போ அவர் வந்து நீங்கள் அதை ஒன்று வாசிங்கன்னாரு நான் ஒரு விருத்தத்தை வாசித்தேன் வாசித்த உடனே இது ரொம்ப அருமையாக பொருந்ததே இது உங்களுக்கு மட்டும் என்னத்துக்கு நான் கச்சேரிக்கே பாடுறேன் அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டார் அதுக்கப்புறம் அவர் கச்சேரியில் பாடுனார் அது மட்டும் இல்லை அப்போ என்ன சொன்னார்னா இப்போ தமிழில் அவர் சொன்னது தான் தமிழில் வந்து கிட்டத்தட்ட தொண்ணூற்றி ஒன்பது சதவீத கீர்த்தனைகள் எல்லாமே பக்தி சார்ந்து தான் இருக்கு பாரதியார் மாதிரி ஒரு சில பேர்த்துடைய ஏதோ ஒரு சதவீதம் தான் வந்து வேறு விஷயங்களை பற்றி பேசுகிறதா இருக்கும் அதனால் திரும்ப திரும்ப அதையே பாடிக்கிட்டே இருக்கிற மாதிரி இருக்குது ஒரே விதமான கண்டென்ட் தான் வருது அதனால் வேறு வேறு வகைகள்லாம் பாடலாம்னு பாடலாம் நீங்கள் இங்கே கீர்த்தனை எழுதி கொடுங்க நான் பாடுறேன் I had never met Gurudev before that. Of course, no, no, but never met him. He wanted to, he came to my room and said, I have to give you something, gave me an envelope with many Gurudevs. Now, Gurudev is a poetic form, which also has a prosody that allows for free-flowing poetic singing. Okay? Uh, so, and we all sing Gurudevs in Carnatic concerts. Uh, it's not based on any rhythmic structure, we free-flow in singing. We usually sing it as a preface for a composition. And he had written a set of Gurudevs during that struggle um, and he asked me, can I record and give it to him? I had asked him, I said, can you read one? And when he read it, I said, why should I just give it to you? I'll sing it in concerts. And that's how our relationship began. And he started by saying this a few days ago, uh, Buka Stalin in uh, inauguration of the Music Academy in, in Chennai made this statement saying, please include a lot of Tamil compositions. in all our forms including Karnataka music. But I'm just going to wind back and give you a note of what Periyar said about this. So this Tamari Sai movement was a very important movement in the early 20th century, maybe around the 1920s to 40s when it picked up. The whole argument was we should sing Karnatic music in Tamari. And the reason why Karnatic music is filled with Telugu and Sanskrit are got to do with social history and political history. We'll come to that another time. And uh, so, Tamil Sai movement started. Uh, the Annamalai uh, University was starting soon. There was a Tamil Sai Sangam in, Ch- in Madras then. And apparently, Periyar was asked, What are you talking about? Tamil is a part of the world. And normally, one would think Periyar would say, What? Yeah, of course, you must sing in Tamil. Periyar being Periyar didn't say that. He said, I don't see what the big deal here is. He said, those guys sing about God in Sanskrit and Telugu. You're going to sing about God in Tamil. How are you different from them? <laughs> okay. I, I think it's a brilliant answer. And if you just extrapolate the larger point, is the larger point is that your vocabulary is also constant and stagnant. If you go to, your subject matter is a singular subject matter with minor variants. So you can only say the same thing. I pray to you, come save me. You're so beautiful. You have lips that are gorgeous. You have breasts that are beautiful. You have hair like this. You have ears like this. I like your earrings. Blah, 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 blah. Come save me. <laughs> you save the other person, why do you save me? I mean, I mean, there are varieties of this. Now the fact of the matter is vocabulary cannot be expanded here. How many different ways can you say this? Musically, of course, you could have tremendous things, but semantically, you can't, right? So, this gets to what the other point that Gurudev made is when I had this discussion after that, I said, look, I think one of the issues in Carnatic music is our subject matter is a very, very narrow subject matter. And it's not about whether you like the subject matter or not. Because of that, we're saying the same things. Okay? And it's not just content, it's also dialect. I'm just adding to what he said. He didn't say it. 
So the dialect used in Carnatic music is again a singular dialect. It's a dialect that the Brahmin community is comfortable with. Right? So you will not hear Tamil that is spoken by multiple communities in India. You won't hear the Tamil that Murugan writes. Right? So I said there are two things here that I would like you to tackle, not me. Is one subject matter and second dialect. So I said, can you write Kirtanam on subject matters that you experience, that you see in the world? And can you use the dialect that is your dialect? He spent, I think, one and a half days in Namakal having discussions before he wrote the first Kirtanam. Karnataka Sangeet is called Panjaratana Kirtana Hill Noon Day. That's why Panjaboda Kirtana Hill Noon Day. That's why it's called Panjaboda Kirtana Hill Noon Day. Panjaboda Kirtana Hill Noon Day. That's why it's called Panjaboda Kirtana Hill Noon Day. That's why it's called Panjaboda Kirtana Hill Noon Day. That's why it's called Panjaboda Kirtana Hill Noon Day. That's why it's called Panjaboda Kirtana Hill Noon Day. That's why it's called Panjaboda Kirtana Kecuali kalau pada mana, kalau saya salah pada kalau pun boleh berapa pun, mandi cerita. Apa ini dorang ni elok dengan apa? Apa ni elok ni itu baru boleh, nak kereta pun boleh, semua boleh. Ia nak nur titah nama macam mana? Ada orang yang tiap tahun boleh, anu mari anak sami itu leh. Selain orang yang kalau itu orang tu orang kita ni pun ni nama pada lah, apa ini cuma ada. Anu mari nak pergi situ dengan boleh, orang dua orang yang pergi. Orang ini the man with scavengers. Adap peti ini nama orang kita naik itu. Awalnya itu kata India orang macam perih alam ke poradi pon ada kau kuli ber, baca baca macam ni ni orang pelajar kaitur kau kono. Awalnya Ramon makasih saya baca orang orang ni Krishna orang Nadi versi ada beri orang orang ni. Awal orang orang perih interview naik itu. Adap peti anak ke adap peti orang orang puri terbit. Krishna juga awal teri, awal adalah itu orang orang yang hidup itu kerana adalah le, adz sama sama nama orang orang sehingga orang orang sunnah le, adz itu pola, rent telai barang lepati, kita nak lihat itu semua, apa ini orang face orang, orang ni ambil ke, orang ni pergi ya, ini dua orang lepati nama kita ada yang ada sehingga nama kita orang orang ambil ke, apa adalah nama orang orang le, rada itu iru itu le, ambil ke lepati. Ia itu, yang mana beri betul le, ia itu adalah, apa ini Yosif boleh, ini kita ni beri umi lah, kan? Tamil ni orang seventeenth century ni, tu patah, na, Sindh, apa ini orang isi panel beri umi, rompa famous. Barat yang orang dah Sindh le, ni ada, ada di mana? Kalama, Marathi, Lanta, Kolama, Marathi, ni, apa ini? Anu macam mana? Orang rompa orang tulis isi, anda sangat tu le, iru. Adalah pelajar wakil itu. Adalah beri nada cinta, kawadi cinta, ibu lelaki wakil itu. Indah kawadi cinta itu orang orang bakti orang teror orang yang dah. Murugan koi lek kawadi itu tu kundu, tay mah itu lek bawa kan. Tay pusat tu ke, anda koi lek koi seorang tu kah? Kawadi ye tol lek cinta, beri le, adi itu beri itu bawa. Apa anda kawadi itu adi itu bawa tu kan? Ada atas tu ke kawadi ada atas ni pe. Apa pada kau ini pada lekik kau ini cendera ber. Anja murukan ini pukul itu pada kau ini beri bawa makan, anja kau ini cendera irukom. Anja beri bawa itu edut, nama ambet kau pain berdala. Apa ini nana, mau cipu nana dah, anja ambet kau beri yana dah. Okay. How do we evolve things? I mean, initially he wrote five songs of the five elements, and there are, I mean, five compositions by. Muthu Swami Dikshita on the Five Elements, very famous composition. But I think the very big difference is the elements in those, considering Dikshita's own social and cultural and religious upbringing, are centered around faith, around them being elements of Shiva. But his five elements are elements of experience, of human experience. So, for example, tea, you know, the fire is actually flowing in the song, right? And how fire actually flows, that it actually catches fire, if you've seen fire moving. So, he wrote that, and then we, you know, we've gone back and forth on many themes, and he touched upon one which I will come back to you about, because we struggled with that theme, I know. Uh, but 
we also decided to write two songs, one on Ambedkar and one on Periyar. Of course, we are being subversive. And the question that is asked to me, which I would like to respond now, respond now, is why do you still sing a Jyadaraja Kirtan? You want to sing these songs of Pirman, Murugan and all these people? Sing that. Stop singing Jyadaraja Kirtan and stop singing Vishnu Kirtan. My, I have two points to make. One is Jyadaraja is still a brilliant composer. Still a genius at work. I don't have to agree with everything Jyadaraja said or stood for. But I will still interact with this composition. I will still have a Kalaguri with this composition. But what I will also do is challenge Jyadaraja. So if you hear a composition of Jyadaraja on, I'm just now hypothetical, on Rama or something. And if there's another question song after that that challenges the notion of Rama, there's something interesting that can happen in the Edegu, in that gap. In the conversation between the two, there is a possibility. I am interested in that gap. I am not interested in discarding something. Because I don't want, I want to deal with it. I do still celebrate Uthu Swami is one of the greatest composers. There's no doubt about it. But I also want to challenge that notion. And I want to be able to do And I think that's what we try to do where we discuss subjects. So we want to write two songs, one on Ambedkar and one on Periyar. Ambedkar is done and Kavali Chindu was the form and he, like you're saying, Sindhu is a musical literary form from around the 17th century. The different types of it is Kavali Sindhu and that's got to do with a certain amount of gait, if I can use that. So the poetic gait follows a certain kind of religious physical gait at times too. Kavali is of course related to Murugan and Kavali Dupana during the uh, festivals. And, but the thing that he didn't talk about, Periyar song is ready, I have not, I, it's already written, I have to tune it, so the, the ball is in my court, actually. Now, the other song that he spoke about is a song on Manuel's scavenging. Beswada Wilson, who is a very dear friend of both of us, he's in fact had a very detailed interview with him, uh, Max S. Awardee, and has worked for the eradication of uh, Manuel's scavenging in India for now decades. Uh, was primarily instrumental for the legislation in 1992, 92 then, the parliament of 92. And uh, both of us, that was the song that took the longest time to write and to conceive. The challenge, I think, the thing that both of us were studying, you know, basically, was what, what position do we take on this issue? We are writing about an issue about people who are being forced to pick up very literally other people's shit. Who are we and how do we make a song on it? So, in fact, Morgan and I, I don't know for how many months I would call again, we'll have a chat, we'll put the phone down, we'll not talk for months. We didn't do the song for almost a year and a half, if you wonder or shy. So, 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 how did you think? But a Matha Kirtan Lamde, if you were in the Patti Edda the Gen, Kate the Edda the Nadilla, Perbal under the Nana Edda the Nadi, Slav Shing will Matu Sulu in the Shita Patti Edda the Gen. And the Gena narrated the two. Sila when a secret of the Lay, Vagama on the road, Sila the Penala. But if a man will scavenge Patti in the Mona thread the day, up in Girathana or Peria Prachina. Now, there are many people who are living in the world. There are many people who are living in the world. There are many Either would be 
என்ன அப்படிங்கிறது எனக்கு திரும்ப திரும்ப யோசிச்சுட்டே இருக்கிறேன் எனக்கு அது வந்து பிடிபடவே இல்லை ரொம்ப நாள் ஆச்சு அப்புறம் கொஞ்ச நாள் போனதுக்கப்புறம் எனக்கு என்னென்னா இதில் மேனுவல் ஸ்கேவஞ்சின்னு சொல்கிறது கை கை அப்படிங்கிற அந்த ஒரு படிமம் வந்து எனக்கு என் மனசில் வந்துச்சு அதை மையமாக வச்சு தான் நம்ம எழுதணும் அப்படின்னு நான் முடிவு பண்ணேன் சரி கை அப்படின்னு சொன்ன உடனே எனக்கு கையை நாம் எதுக்கெல்லாம் பயன்படுத்துகிறோம் அப்படிங்கும் போது எனக்கு முதல்ல எடுத்த உடனே நான் வந்து ஒரு விவசாய குடும்பத்திலிருந்து வந்தவங்கிறதுனால எனக்கு சேரள்ளி வயல் உழுகின்ற கைகள் அப்படிங்கிற வார்த்தை தான் எனக்கு முதல்ல வந்தது அந்த தொடர் தான் எனக்கு முதல்ல வந்தது சேரள்ளி வயல் உழுகின்ற கண்ட கைகள் அப்படிங்கிறது எனக்கு வந்துச்சு உடனே அடுத்த வரி வந்து சோரள்ளி தினம் உண்ணுகின்ற கைகள் அப்படிங்கிறது வந்துச்சு இப்போ இது பார்த்தீங்கன்னா அந்த கீர்த்தனையில் இது அணுகுள்ளவையாக தான் இருக்கும் இது அப்போ கைகள் எது எதுக்கெல்லாம் பயன்படுது அப்படின்னு வரும்போது கூறும் கடவுள் கொடுத்த கைகள்னு ஒரு வரி அதில் எழுதுனேன் கூறும் கடவுள் கொடுத்த கொடுத்த கைகள் அப்படிங்கும் போது கூறும்னா நாம் எல்லாரும் ரொம்ப உயர்வாக சொல்லி கொண்டிருக்கக்கூடிய அந்த கடவுள் அந்த கடவுள் நமக்கு கொடுத்த கைகள் சரி இதெல்லாம் இந்த இதெல்லாம் வந்துருச்சு இது வந்த உடனே ஒரு கேள்வி வரணும் இந்த கைகள் அப்படின்னு உடனே அப்போ தான் எனக்கு அந்த பல்லவி தோணுச்சு இது எவ்வளோ நாள் நான் எடுத்துக்கிறேன் அப்ப என்ன இந்த கை இந்த எழுதுக்கு அப்புறம் இந்த கைகள் இந்த கைகள் நாரமலம் அல்லலாமா அப்படின்னு அந்த பல்லவி அதுல இருந்து தான் பூசம் ஆனால எனக்கு முதல்ல அந்த அணுபல்லவிக்கு வந்த வாக்கியங்கள் தான் முதல்ல அமைஞ்சது அதற்கப்புறம் வந்து நாரமலம் அல்லலாமான்னு வந்த உடனே கேள்வி வந்த உடனே நான் இது நம்ம நமக்கு எதிரில் இருக்கக்கூடிய ஒரு சமூகத்தை பார்த்து இந்த கேள்வி எழுப்ப வேண்டியதான் அப்படின்ட்டு அடுத்தடுத்து வரிகள் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா அந்த கேள்விகளாக அமைச்சு அப்படி அந்த பல்லவி உருவாச்சு இதுதான் அது அது உருவானது அது ரொம்ப மனசுக்கு நிறைவாக அமைஞ்ச ஒரு பாடல் அது பெகவாட வில்சன் போன்றவர்கள்லாம் வந்து மேனுவல் ஸ்கேவஞ்சிங்க ஒழிக்கிறதுக்காக எவ்வளவோ போராட்டங்கள் சட்ட போராட்டங்கள் பல வருஷங்களாக தொடர்ந்து செஞ்சிட்டு இருக்கிறாங்க அதில் ஒரு சின்ன பங்கு வந்து நம்மளால் செய்ய முடிஞ்சதுங்கிற ஒரு திருப்தி எனக்கு அதுவும் குறிப்பாக இந்த மாதிரியான ஒரு விஷயம் ஒரு கர்நாடக இசையில் வந்து வர்றதுங்கிறது மிகப்பெரிய விஷயம் நான் எழுதிட்டா கூட அது பாடுறதுக்கு தயாராக இருக்கும் அது கிருஷ்ணாவால் தான் முடியும் கிருஷ்ணா வந்து மேடையில் முதல்ல பாடும்போது அவர் முதல்ல ஒரு பெங்களூரில் ஒரு கச்சேரியில் இந்த கீர்த்தனையை பாடுறேன்னு சொல்லி சொன்னார் அப்போ நான் அவர்கிட்ட பாட கச்சேரி தொடங்குறதுக்கு முன்னால் அவர்கிட்ட போய் நான் சொன்னேன் நாரமலம் அள்ளலாமா அப்படின்னு வருது ஒரு இடத்துல வந்து எதுக்காவது வந்து இது இப்படி கூட சொல்லலாம் கிருஷ்ணா நார பிஏ அள்ளலாமான்னு பாடுங்க அப்படின்னு சொன்னேன் இல்லை நீங்கள் அப்படி சொல்லுது பாடுவீங்களான்னு கேட்டேன் ஆமாம் பாடுவீங்களான்னு கேட்டேன் நார பிஏ அள்ளலாமா பீன்னு போட்டால் நீங்கள் அதை வந்து பாடுவீங்களா சரி and uh, he said the first thing that after a prolonged time kai the hand came and so he turned the song into a certain not an appeal but a condemnation of society actually i would say that where you're challenging society and saying what have you done so the tone of the song was not i mean initially we said should the tone be saying that you should eradicate my mind scam then we said okay should the tone then be about the uh, struggles of the people yes the song does have about the struggles but it was more finally about saying we as a society what did that and i think that turn in the song is quite brilliantly done in the pallavi and he gives an anecdote which i also use a lot of times is when he for naramalam allalamma and i was going to get on stage for the first time and before i got on stage he taps me and says we will be sure one thing can you we use are you willing to sing nara pa yanna see malam like i say is a very convenient word it sounds like a it's a sanskrit word pushpam malam kamalam <laughs> yeah kamalam malam if you if you didn't know you think kamalam and malam are very close to each other you would think malam and kamalam are completely different things correct right? then தெரியாதவங்க 
Uh, but P is, you know, I always say in English that malam is feces, P is shit. It's picture you get on your the front of your face is entirely different. So when he said P to me, I saw shit. <laughs> now, it's very easy for him to write it. Not very easy to sing with my social condition. <laughs> because I'm conditioned. I'm not used to singing Bhairavi Ragam saying shit. <laughs> I mean, that's, that, that the contradiction for me is like, it's like, it doesn't even make sense in my head. All I'm saying is that it's also a struggle because it challenges your condition, right? So intellectually being in a certain manner is very different from emotionally actually being in some place because there is a, a, an internal stomach churn that has to happen there. And I remember I said yes to him on stage and said every time I still remember said speed, it was so hard for it to come out of my mouth. <laughs> It was actually physically hard for me to, and I'm like thinking to myself, I'm saying, Nara, and I know there is some, I feel like there's something wrong. As I'm doing something wrong, right? Of course, I mean, after some time, P, Malam, Kavalam, all sound the same, you get used to it. Right? That's a different thing. But I'm saying that this, so even when you set music, right, to say words, to dialects, not just the meaning, it's dialects. Sometimes you're not used to saying certain words in certain melodies. How do you how do you utter it? Also remember the words said and the words sung are not the same. They're two different bodies. Saying P and singing P is not the same thing. You ask any singer of any genre, they'll tell you this. When you sing P, something else happens to the P. Right? So this is also something that happens constantly. It's not like I've solved resolved this problem. No. These imageries are still going to come because I'm still conditioned. They're going to come and stand right in front of me and say, what the hell are you doing? You know, and I have to work with it. Right? So, I'll leave it there. Ambedkar. <laughs> okay, I'll just sing one verse from it. Uh, thank goodness you warned me so I picked up the lyrics and kept it. Karpi wonder ser purachi se yin re karte nenjil videta vira Karpi wonder ser purachi se yin re karte nenjil videta vira Karpi wonder ser purachi se yin re karte nenjil videta vira Por karati in re videta sura Arpasadi gay garitida bande gariway uti garigatir yem magatil vardin dressingar Karpi wundre se purachi se yendre karatin in jilvideta vira poor kalatil in rivideta sura Arpasadi gay garitida bande gariway uti garigatir Yum Magatil Vardindra Singar Matra Utra Madhil Nerp Matra Utra Madhil Nerp Manuve Kurla Vanda Marva Matra Utra Madhil Nerp Manuve Kurla Vanda Marva our Monday Pilate and the Gorvam, Artal Vegam Marum Megam Maril, so her can be did the year of our ideal building the Mananga. Yet we think you make up. Yet we think you make up. Yet we think you make up. Yet we think Poetry party to the Kavanda Baba Sahib and Bed Kara, Adu Pora and Rip Mudum Pera, Adu Pora and Rip Mudum Pera. Thank you. 
So I'm opening the session for questions, interactions. So please, any questions? Sayyidah, you are the best person to talk to you. You are the best person to talk to you. You are the best person to talk to you in the conversation. You are the best person to talk to you. பெண்களை <laughs> பெண்களுக்கு <laughs> அப்போ நீங்க அது தொடர்ந்து நீங்க வந்து மூணாவது உதாரணம் சொன்னீங்க இல்லையா மூணாவது ஒரு பெண் வந்து அவங்க ஒரு பிராமண பெண் வந்து அவங்க தோல் கருவி செய்யறாங்க அப்படின்னு சொல்லும் போது அதுல எதுக்காக மேரேஜ் வந்துருது uh uh well i'll give you the gist he said that he took he said at the base of the conversation that we had a word that we both did not use was untouchability that at the base of this entire thing exists this notion of purity this notion of uh um team dama as we say untouchability and ritual related kind of notions of social purity and cultural purity um the other point that he made was i'm missing something in between i know uh but i've tried uh the third point which i think which is registered again now for me is this when there was a brand new one making the money right um so what was that what does that signify um and an analogy he used was a brand new make it was something like an intercast marriage which i said that i don't agree with that analogy the point is well taken he also spoke about for example why women are not making the instrument and uh, an example is again social hierarchy and traditional society not allowing uh, certain jobs or certain ways of function to be shall we say switch between the genders for example a person who uh, is three wala it's always the men who are doing this three so women who pick up the clothes and come and there's a certain divisions being made this is uh, yeah just of what you said uh but you may have said more but you may just can you can you tell yourself because i think we, i would like to respond and then move no, on why not now right oh fine fine thank you thank you so uh but i just want to respond to what you said and i think that there is no question about the fact that at the base of this is the untouchable tindamai as a basic structure of social reality right and uh, that is why this notion of purity is there and in a way the notion of purity is also carry forward the notion of gender right so they are interconnected the tindamai is or the untouchability is interconnected to both right within between caste within caste in all the messiness there is there. so i mean there's no disagreement with the what you said and i think in many ways in the book that's what we constantly talk about is this notion of purification and the book constantly talks about this notion of what is this purification right and uh, what is the ritual of purification so when the mrdagam maker says i need to be there in between for the mrdagam to enter the puja are this entire thing is untouchability and purification that's what it is and you take take the maker out that does that that uh, whole thing doesn't exist right so yeah இன்னைக்கு கூட ஒரு ஒரு இடத்துக்கு என்ன கூப்பிடுறதுக்கு ரொம்ப யோசிச்சு யோசிக்கிறவங்களா இருக்கேன் ஒரு ஒரு கல்வி நிறுவனத்துக்கு ரொம்ப சாதாரணமான இப்போ எங்கெல்லாம் நான் புழங்கிட்டு இருந்தனோ அந்த மாதிரியான ஒரு ஸ்பேஸ் எல்லாமே எனக்கு இன்னைக்கு இல்லாமல் அதனால அது முடிஞ்சு போன ஒரு விஷயம் இல்லை கண்டினியூ ஆகிட்டு தான் 
அது என்னை எப்படி ஒரு வகையில் மூட் பண்ணிச்சு அப்படின்னு சொன்னால் வந்து ரைட்டிங்கை பொறுத்த வரைக்கும் நான் சொல்கிறேன் ரைட்டிங்கில் அப்படின்னா நான் வேறு விதமாக எழுதுறதுக்கு யோசிக்கிறதுக்கான ஒரு இதை வந்து ஏற்படுத்துச்சு நாம் இப்போ பழைய முறையில் எழுத முடியாது அப்படிங்கிற ஒரு முடிவுக்கு வந்து நான் இப்போ வேறு ஒரு வகையில் எழுதுறதுக்கான அந்த பாதையில் தான் போயிட்டு இருக்கேன் இப்போ நீங்கள் அதுக்கு பின்னாடி நான் எழுதுறது எல்லாமே பார்த்தீங்கன்னா அதுக்கும் நான் முன்னால் எழுதுறதுக்குமான ஒரு பெரிய டிஃப்ரென்ஸ் இருக்கிறத நீங்கள் பார்க்கலாம் நீங்கள் இப்போ ஒரு ஜாதி பேர் ஊர் பேர் இதெல்லாம் பயன்படுத்துறதுலாம் எனக்கு ரொம்ப சர்வசாதாரணமாக நான் எனக்கு வரும் நான் எங்கேயோ நடந்த ஒரு கதையை கூட நான் எங்கள் ஊரில் நடந்ததாக மாற்றி நான் எழுதுவேன் ஏன்னா அது எனக்கு வந்து ரொம்ப வசதியாக இருக்கும் என் ஊர் சூழல் இதெல்லாம் வந்து அந்த ஒரு பேக்ரவுண்டை கொண்டு வர்றதுக்கு எனக்கு ஒரு பரிச்சயமான ஒரு விஷயம் ஒரு சம்பவத்தை எங்கே எங்கே நடந்தாலும் அதை கொண்டு வந்து பறிச்சிக்க முடியும் பட் இன்னைக்கு எனக்கு அந்த பேக்ரவுண்டே வந்து ஒரு பெரிய பிரச்சனையாக இருக்கும் அதை பண்ண முடியும் அப்போ நான் வந்து ஒரு புதுசை தேடி தான் போக வைக்கிறேன் அந்த வகையில் அந்த யோசனை அது ஒரு வகையில் பார்த்தா கஷ்டமாக இருக்குது இன்னொரு வகையில் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா ஒரு சவாலாக இருக்கும் ஒரு எழுத்தாளருக்கான ஒரு சவாலாக இன்னொரு இதை நோக்கி போகிறதுக்கான ஒரு சவாலாகவும் நான் அதை எடுத்துக்கிறேன் அதனால் இப்போ தொடர்ந்து எழுத முடியும் oppression cultural balance against you which is a common question to both of us uh, he said that it's not like it's a story that's over uh, it still exists in the other way he writes has changed he used to very freely talk about communities and castes and his writing and now he has to use he has learned to use different mechanisms to address the same issues and not use the words directly and uh, therefore it has been a challenge at the same time uh, it's difficult he didn't make us commit saying that it's uh, he's not like me but i just want to say something that you're also coming from different privileges here right so i think one should be very careful uh, i should be very careful in this point right we're coming from very different privileges uh, and those privileges have access to different things and different spaces i'm not specifying them but we can talk about it therefore at the same time as i say this to say it's easy is a lie it's not easy it's not all easy i'm not comparing mine with anybody else let me make that very clear i'm only speaking for myself as an emotional being it is not easy it is not easy when you have to think uh can you say it's not easy when your best friends say they want nothing to do with you anymore it's not easy when somebody who's your friend for 20 years old 20 years calls when says i will never share his dice with you again and happens again and again it's not easy when you go to public spaces and you know you're watched for the wrong reasons these are difficult. it's not easy when i'm one worried about my daughters at home so i'm just saying that bravado kept the sight but there are phases you go through the phase when it's very hard and then you forget about it and then you go on and then some little thing happens and boom everything comes back but you just learn in a way to like keep negotiating it in your own way so all i'll say is imagine if a person with so much goddamn privilege is telling you this imagine what it be for a person who has not even 0.1% of this privilege that should be a learning from what i said Now, we were speaking of privilege and uh, what privilege does sometimes is we do not see and you didn't use exactly these words but you said that initially you did not see the skin and then you did. What is it that made you see the skin? I asked the makers who were helping me, one maker especially, I said take me to the abattoir. He refused. He said no, no, you will vomit and you will think, I'm not taking it. So I said, no, I want to come. And because I said, if you're going to have this conversation, we have to know. I mean, I have to learn what is going on. And uh, well, we did. Uh, that's the way I really saw the skin. Until then, I saw it when they were making. But I didn't see the skin. I saw parts of one of them in the making. I went to the abattoir and I saw thorn just skinned out and carcasses. And we were picking and choosing the right skin. that's when i really saw it right so i think that's that was but it was a very 
I speak about very, very great detail in the book. So it was a, it was an experience that was very different from what I imagined it to be. So it was a very different learning from the learning I thought. Learning for a privilege, so and so. Seller and buyer, player and maker. There was a scope for to think about untouchability. I mean, I'm buying from a person who made, who was a, an untouchable. But now, industries have come. There is a mediator between maker and player with uh, names, shop names, products names, brand names, who are dominant cost people, like leather products. How to see this? How to? I'm feeling like that is erasing this thought of uh, experiencing or feeling the notion that this has come from an untouchable or this has come from dead animals. Just to clarify, you're saying the shop is oh, I'm telling I got it, I got it. the industrialization. It exactly. Comes, it's very interesting you say this. The maker will tell you the opposite. The maker will tell you the shop gave me dignity. Very interesting. The maker will tell you the shop gave me space that was my own where the player had to come to my shop to buy the brother. That changed my power equation. Two, please remember that for a professional musician, going to a store and buying a brother never happens. A professional musician wants a professional maker and wants that personal connection. So he's not going to go to a music store and just pick up any brother. Not going to happen. But the Vrindana maker at one time used to go to the player's house. At one time they could not enter the house. Then they could enter the first part of the house. Then they were told which door by which they can enter. Then there was a designated room in which they could work. All this is happening. Then that was happening in the village. Then you come to the city, there's an apartment. That is some change the dynamics. The dining hall, the kitchen and the hall are all the same. Now the maker is making a Vrindana in a common space, that changes the equation. Food is happening right here. That changes the relationship. The Madras makers were very smart. They always had a shop. <laughs> so the player had to come to the shop. The Tanjavur guys came in from Tanjavur. Took a long time to realize the benefits of a shop. He professionalized them. Now they say, I don't care who you are. You come to my shop. Of course, senior Vrindan is still go to their house. Keep to myself. Because there is this old world thing. I mean, I'm not, let's not go there. But everybody else is coming to the shop, sitting on a little stool. There's traffic going around all the way. That changes. So the question is, who is asking this question? Now, in our perception, we think that this erases it. Actually, the maker will say, no, the shop gave me. He will tell you another thing. He will say, look, I'm tired of making brother for these professionals. They don't pay properly. They don't treat me properly also. I sell it to one store, I don't care about the way it's made, it's some stupid the student is going to play it. He doesn't need high quality Mardana. I use low quality skin and I sell it by four, to four, four times the price, I'm making more money. What are you going to say to that? My economics is much better selling to a shop that's selling 20 Mardanos. So the question is, who is asking this question and who is responding to this question? The answer changes. To me, I'll say, oh, the shop guy is made completely, capitalism is completely made it that we forget the real maker. No, the maker will tell you something else. I'm just, I'm just saying that makers have told me this. But I'm, I'm just repeating what I've been told. So it's a it's a very different way they look at it. So they love their shop. It's great pride in their shop. And they have no problem selling these Muradakam students. Of course, there'll be one only professional maker who makes one who says, all these guys make low quality Muradakam selling to the shop. But that case, I am exporting 40 brothers a month and they owe money. So there's complex economics here. Really. So. I have a question. Do you think it's different if it is not a skin instrument? I, I know it is different, but I, I used to play the sitar and it's a very different kind of relationship with the maker and player. And um, in my experience, when you like, of course, I'm not professional, so I bought it from relatively okay kind of shop, but you don't have the relationship that you would say. But yes, I know that people, the, the big sitarists used to go to one particular shop in Calcutta and only they would make the 
the Jabari for them and all that. But there's so many other people also who I feel like for the player, it's actually also it's also a relationship you create with your instrument. And over years and years, it's like it's like a prayer, you know. It's, and then it becomes yours, and it's only yours. Nobody else can touch that sitar and bring out the same sound. So, isn't that also something that is important to recognize? I nothing, mean, nothing against all what you said. I think is great, but maybe this aspect is also very personal and very important, isn't it? To if somebody feels very close to the instrument, say my body is my instrument, I can't have an argument with that. So I actually cannot have an argument with you. If you feel that way, you feel that way. If a player feels that the instrument is his body and it's, it belongs to him, it's an emotional relationship that's happened through years. Yeah. Is it true? Is a different question. Is it sound really different from Ravi Shankar playing his sitar and Fugir can't play this his sitar? That's a different question. That's a different question. If I can tell you it's somebody else's sitar, you may never know. Probably. So, I won't go there. But if somebody feels that way, fine. You feel that way. And I acknowledge that it's emotional, it's personal. Okay, that I can do. The only thing I want to add is yes, it's different from a wood instrument to a skin instrument. It's completely two words. Things. Also, for the social hierarchy is different. The wood, uh, the carpentry community or the asari community or the achari community are at a different social position than the community, the Dalit community that do skin instruments. So there is a hierarchical difference. I'm far more comfortable going to the house of an Asari than going to the house of a Dalit. There is a social structural difference across this country. Ask Tabla makers what happens to them. That's a different story altogether. Right? So I think that there is a clear distinction that you cannot, and like you yourself said, there's no constant relationship. That changes the dynamics entirely. Yeah. I mean, I have, I, I have Tantura as well. I believe that Tambura is, is personal to me. But I've detached myself from it now. Yeah. How? Because I don't think it's mine. It's, it's not mine. Okay. Because then I have to believe that I go to I only sing if that is played with me. If I have some other you know, see there are many technical issues with instruments also that you have to recognize. The, one of the things that instrumentalists are talking about when they say that instrument is yours is they have, by reflex, no exact position of every movement in their hand. So many times they are transferring that to an emotional aspect too. It's like blind, you know, which part of the string moves where, what the tensions are through 30 years of playing. So that becomes a bond also, which is why if you give a new instrument, it's not the same thing. Not necessarily because there is anything really different, but you don't know. It takes a while for it to become yours. So there is also a technique aspect that you cannot take away from the emotional connection. I'm not saying that it's nothing emotional, but I'm saying there are many other aspects that we need to think about in a mm. non-passionate way. We'll take our last question. Yeah, Rajiv. So, you have a question about the question. Krishna on the part of the chicken. So, other can you be in a reaction? Okay. Okay. Just transfer quick question. He said that um, the song on Manuel's Cabbage, uh, you know, you've got a lot of oppositions for many other things that you've written, but the song on Manuel's Cabbage, you write it and then you get me, Krishna, to sing. Um, and what kind of responses did you get? Sing also in the Karnataka. Ah, sing also in the Karnataka. So, what kind of responses have you got from that? The, I can't say. Either that or I can't say. This is for another one. This is for another. Now, Krishna, far more than that. Why? Why did he not say that? Why? 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 Okay, 
என் சொன்னா இது இந்த மாதிரி ஒரு விஷயத்த ஒரு கர்நாடக சங்கீதத்துல கொண்டு வந்து எல்லாத்துக்கும் கவனத்துக்கு கொண்டு வரதுங்கிறது பெரிய விஷயம் அப்படின்னு தான் வந்து சொன்னாங்க எனக்கு தெரிய இந்த எழுதுன பாடல்கள்ல சோசியல் மீடியாவில் சில எதிர்ப்புகள் வந்தது கமெண்ட்ஸ் அது அந்த மாதிரிலாம் வந்தது அப்படின்னா ஒரு பாட்டுக்கு அது வந்து அந்த பாட்டில் முதல் முறையாக பெரிய அப்படிங்கிற வார்த்தையை நான் பயன்படுத்தி எழுதியிருந்தேன் அது ரெண்டாயிரத்தி பதினெட்டு நினைக்கிறேன் பதினெட்டு அல்லது பத்தொன்பதாக இருக்கும் அப்போ தமிழ்நாட்டில் சில இடங்களில் பெரியார் சிலையை வந்து சேதம் பண்ணுறது பெரியார் சிலைக்கு செருப்பு போடுறது இந்த மாதிரியான விஷயங்கள் நடந்தது அப்போ அந்த சமயத்தில் வந்து ஒரு கேரளாவில் ஒரு ஃபெஸ்டிவலில் கிருஷ்ணா பேசும்போது அந்த விஷயத்தை தொட்டு பேசினேன் என்ன சொன்னார்னா சிலை வந்து எந்த நமக்கு ஒத்த கருத்துடையவர்களுடைய சிலையா இல்லை முரண்படக்கூடியவர்களுடைய சிலையான்னு பார்க்கக்கூடாது சிலைங்கிறது ஒரு கலைப்படை அந்த கண்ணோட்டத்தில் தான் நாம் பார்க்கணும் அந்த ப கண்ணோட்டத்தில் பார்த்தோம்னா நாம் சிலையை சேதம் பண்ண மாட்டோம் அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டு பேசிட்டேன் அப்போ அது எனக்கு ரொம்ப அந்த கருத்து ரொம்ப கன்வின்சிங்காக இருந்தது அப்போ நான் அவர்கிட்ட அந்த சமயத்தில் கேட்கவும் செஞ்சேன் சரி சரி உங்களுக்கு வந்து இப்போ ஒரு கோட்சே சிலையை வந்து சேதம் பண்ணால் அதையும் கண்டிப்பீங்களா அப்படின்னு ஆமாம் கண்டிப்பாக அப்படின்னு ஏன்னா சிலைங்கிறது ஒரு கலைப்படைப்புன்னு நாம் பார்க்குறோம் அந்த அடிப்படையில் பார்க்கும்போது நீங்கள் அதுக்கு வந்து நீங்கள் இன்டர்பிரிட்டேஷன் வேணால் வேறு கொடுங்க ஆனால் சேதம் பண்ணுறதுங்கிறது எதுவாக இருந்தாலும் அது ஒரு கலைப்படைப்புன்னு தான் நாம் பார்க்கணும் அப்படின்னு சொன்னாங்க அந்த பொருளில் பெரியார் சிலை சேதம் பண்ணதை வச்சு சிலைகள் எல்லாம் கலையில் வடிவம் அப்படின்னு சொல்லிட்டு ஒரு திருத்தனை இருக்கு அதுக்கு பார்த்தீங்கன்னா அந்த திருத்தனையும் இவர் பாடியும் போட்டிருந்தார் கச்சேரிகளில் பாடினார் தனியாகவும் பாடி போட்டார் அதுக்கு சோசியல் மீடியாவில் நிறைய மோசமான கமெண்ட்ஸ் இருக்குது அதுதான் மற்றபடி நேரடியாக எதுவும் வரலை நிறைய பாடல்களுக்கு நல்ல வரவேற்பு தான் இருக்குது அதை பற்றி கிருஷ்ணா கூட சொல்ல முடியும் I mean, this translate, he said that uh, for that song specifically, there was no, no major opposition that he or no negative comments. And the song for which that he, we received negative remarks was a song that came out of uh, a conversation we had after I spoke at a literary festival in Cochin. This was after, around the time when a lot of statues were being knocked down, very high statue in Tamil Nadu, and I think there was Lenin statue somewhere uh, in Meghale or somewhere. And so uh, we had, you know, at the, at the uh, literary festival, I said, the one thing that we don't think of political statues is that we don't think it is a creation of an artist. We forget that the statue is created by an artist. So ultimately it is an art object. So to me, defacing any art object is a problem. You can disagree, you can remove, you can keep it hidden, you can say it doesn't have to have a public space, all that's fine. But do we need to destroy it? So, and I said that I, I think there's an issue there. For me, there's an issue there. And he came and said, are you sure if there was a statue of God saying, you say the same thing? I said, yeah, I would say the same thing if you're going to deface it because some artists created that statue. Of course, we can go back into more complicated questions and was the artist supposed to do a statue of a white person, for example? We can, this, that's, that's one of those conversations that's more complicated. But destroying is the whole point, or defacing is the point. And he wrote a composition in, in which Peria Sarai, can you see, is that Maria? Yeah. Yes. Yes, once again, I'm just trying to remember something. Uh, I forget the last line. Last line, Periyar name comes. It's probably the first Carnatic song with Periyar name, Red Pierce. It is actually, I'm sure of it. And for that, there was a lot of remarks saying that somehow we had studied Carnatic music by bringing Periyars. Yes, we have a question. Do you think through the ages, there has been defacing and that's only how people change? Periyar defaced? Religion, yeah. in a way. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about the literal defacing here. I'm not talking about the defacing of an idea. or to, I'm only talking about damaging a statue. Let me put it here. And to me, I said, do we see political statues also as a creation of art, of an artist? And my point then is that you can deface the statue in many ways. And to me, to me, the physical destruction that's 
would you say that when you are putting P and Q in your song, you are replacing that term? You are most welcome to sing. I, I, they are most welcome to sing. Many people feel that way. Yes. So, so don't you think that? So, there's a there's, there's small difference between the two. There is an aesthetic difference of the two things that you need to recognize. The raga is not a product of P. You're comparing, actually, your comparison doesn't work because you're talking about two different forms of art objects, and we'll have to have a longer conversation outside of this. But poetry is an art object. Yes. So, the defacement of the language will be the problem. It's not de- there's no defacing of the language in the Nara There is a de- there is only a there is a conceptual contestation that is happening. You're most uh, 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 if you had a statue of somebody you don't agree with, contest that with another statue, contest that with anything else. That's a, that is the kind of analogy that I'm talking about here. Your musical analogy doesn't directly work because they're two different aesthetic forms. So the great statue that Modi has constructed of uh, who is it? Because it's uh, 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 I, I would say no. I'm sorry. I don't care. I will still make that argument. I will make that argument that breaking down something, it doesn't know where it's made, which means China or Tibet. I don't care. The point is to me, we have to think of this. We may have a, I mean, I completely disagree with your politics. I will deface the idea. But I do have a problem with physically breaking it. I do have an issue, and I think that we, if you think that there is a, some creator behind it, it's an inter- I think it's also a good question. We've not spoken to the person who made it. Maybe we should have that conversation. And maybe then we'll have a different opinion. If the person who made that statue is sitting with us today and said, this is how I made this statue, what are we going to say to that person? That's going to be an interesting conversation to have too. So I think, we have, I think there's a lot to think about. Uh, this is the last, very last question from the TV <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, okay. uh, his question was, Pare uh, another instrument. And uh, there's, a, there's a conversation I've had with Pare Makers, which is there on my YouTube channel. And uh, of course, this book all over the He said there's also an organization like Nila who taken Pare Say in order to the Sava stage. Uh, what do you think of it? So, I just want to say that actually, if I may stick the, say this, it was Uru Rodkot Kopu Vida that for the first time brought these art forms on to Sava stage. And in fact, Ranjit was one of the people who spoke. That and uh, we, in Mailapur, at the heart of Mailapur, we actually had Ghana music, we had uh, Paraise, all the Sabha stage. The audience there were the Sabha going audience. So that is a different kind of a in, uh, intervention. What I think Neelam did is a different kind of a Sabha intervention. What they basically did is they said we occupy this entire space on and off the stage. Very important. With with people who normally don't feel that that is their space, whether it is the artist or the audience. So I think there. I'm just saying there are two. These are two different kinds of interventions coming from two different sets of people also, because we also belong to a different set of social construction, right? And I think they are they are both very very important because they both generate different kinds of spatial interventions, contestations. 
for different sets of people. So I think that it's very, very important what's happening. Now, the, well, you know, the, the Mahanredi Makkal uh, happened during COVID, right? Now this December season, it cannot happen in the summers. Because the summers are open now. Now during December, that's not happening. So we need to go another stage. The next stage is they can be a never be a December Ise Bida in Tamil in Chennai without having also Makkal Isai as part of the Bida in a Sabha. That's the next thing. So Kannada music can happen. I mean, that has its space, it has its audience, whatever. But that has to be parallelly contested at that time. What both these interventions are doing is they are contesting it still in a separate fashion, if I can use that word. I'm, I'm probably not the right word, but you get what I'm saying, right? As separate events. Even that separation is a problem. Right? So I'm saying the next should be there can be no separation. Chennai is simple. So then you really then invaded all spaces and in a way challenge this notion of any space. It'll take time. I don't think it's I think we are now at a point where this can happen. I would have said this ten years ago. But I think it can happen very soon. That you have an Isai Vida, where Carnatic music may happen in the morning, uh, yeah, Paraisi may happen in the afternoon, Kurtu uh, can happen in the evening. That's interesting. Then multiple audiences are coming in, multiple spaces, there's overlap of audience experiences, different things. You have people rubbing shoulders who would not rub shoulders normally in the audience. Then you are allowing for a messy place. More the mess, more interesting things happen. <laughs> Thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for those uh, wonderful questions. And thank you for this uh, amazing conversation uh, about Sebastian and Sun, about music, art, literature. Thank you so much. And uh, I wish a very good night to everyone. Thank you.